Good afternoon to you. Welcome to Green Stadium here in Washington, D.C., where today the Howard Bison take on the Norfolk State Spartans. These are two teams having mediocre seasons, and by mediocre, I'm being nice because the Bison come in at 1-6, and six, while the Spartans are 2-6 and six on the year. My name is Ty Miller, joined by Tony McGee, and Tony will start with the Norfolk State Spartans, a team that is 2-6, and six, but they could easily be 6-2, and two, and that's primarily because of their quarterback, Dennis Brown. Yes, Dennis Brown is a very versatile quarterback. Not only does he pass well with over 1,000 yards, he has almost 300 yards rushing. Therefore, Howard will have to really stop him from passing first and run second. The real bad news for Norfolk State is on their defense, where their free safety Terrell Whitehead makes most of their tackles. Whenever you have a free safety making most of your tackles, that means your defensive line, as well as your linebackers, they're not doing the job. Therefore, they need that upfront pressure and they need better play. Now let's talk about the one and six Howard Bison, a team that really doesn't know who they are right now. Yes, early in the season, they were running the ball a little bit better. Now they've gone to the passing game and that's not successful. They need to establish right now, are we running the ball? Or are we going to pass the ball? And their bright spot too has been on defense where Indoor Cooper continues to impress. Indoor Cooper averaging over 13 tackles a game. This guy can go to the next level, but he needs help from his teammates. Howard and Norfolk State, the Bison on a three-game losing streak, while the Spartans on a five-game losing streak. Spartans and Bison coming up on HBCU Sports. This game being brought to you by Russell Athletics. Russell Athletics. Paradise Exit, the latest in fashion, music, dining, and more. Church's Chicken. Church's Chicken. Publix Food Store, where shopping is a pleasure. And by Navy. And once again, good afternoon to you from Green Stadium here in Washington, D.C., where the Howard Bison are taking down the Norfolk State Spartans. The Spartans have won the toss and elected to receive, and we are just about set to get underway here. Ty Miller and Tony McGee on this sunny and nice day in Washington, D.C. Temperature near 70 degrees. There is John Mendoza making his approach, and here's the kick going deep to Norfolk State, and it's going to roll out of bounds at about the 20-yard line, and right away the Bison make a mistake in the kicking game, and that will start Norfolk State off in excellent field position. And this has been the case for the last four or five years. You open the game, you get a kickoff, and then you give them excellent field position. And that's what's been transpiring. They must address that. I know it's at the end of the season, but that's very important. So Norfolk State will start out first and 10 with good field position. The ball spotted at their own 40-yard line. The Spartans come out with um, a record of 2-6 and six on the season as we look at the starting lineups for the uh, Howard Bison. We'll get to their offense a bit later on because right now Norfolk State's on offense. And the Spartans will come out with Dennis Brown under center, actually in the shotgun formation at quarterback. Brown sends a man in motion. And here's a quick handoff in the end of the round. And the player trips, looking for a receiver downfield. But wisely, Jamar Johnson throws it out of bounds. Trick oration on the first place, Tony. First place, on that is the wide receiver, Jamar Johnson on that play. What it is when your defense has a reputation as you look at the, the the uh, Howard's defense, when they have a reputation of overflowing, you have propensity to try to do some overflowing plays. In other words, you'll run one way and go back the other, and that's what that reverse was. You really get them to overflow and overreact to the play. Five wide for the Spartans, second down and 10. Dennis Brown takes a snap. Brown back to pass, has time, has a man out there, and it's going to be a short completion for a gain of maybe one yard, if that much, to J. Martin Johnson, a 6'4", 220-pound senior from Norfolk, Virginia. Gain of five on that play. Looked like it was back to the line of scrimmage, but he did get five, and now it's going to bring up a third down and five as we look at Norfolk State's offensive and defensive lines here. They're on offense, so it's third down and five now for Dennis Brown and company. Brown again in shot confirmation. This is three receivers to the left, two to the right. Howard with a three-man front and a linebacker creeping up close. Here's Brown, long snap count. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage. And we'll take the snap. Brown, three-step drop, has a quick pass over the middle, and it's down inside Howard territory, down to the 39-yard line. And that's going to be a first down for Daryl Dickerson. Once again, they were looking at that middle zone, and Howard is playing a two, is playing a cover two, which they're pushing it 
receivers inside. And what they're doing is they're getting that receiver right there between the linebacker and the defensive back and the quick pass. What it looked like Norfolk wants to do this week is really play safe and get short passes. Gain of 12, so a first down and 10 at the Bison 39-yard line for Norfolk State, who now has two running backs right beside the quarterback, Dennis Brown. Brown takes a snap, inside handoff, and it's going to go down to about the 37-yard line as Takeem Hedgeman was the uh, man on the carry. And a tackle made by number 44, James Carter, for the Howard Bison. I will tell you what, James Carter has really been coming on and playing very well, and he's really filling in that need that Indoor Cooper has for defense help. What you're looking at in Norfolk, they ran two quick passes. They tried to reverse. Now they're running the ball. So what they're trying to do is try a array of plays, see what works best within their seven-on-one situation. Second down and eight for the Spartans. Brown again, shotgun formation, two-step drop, quick pass out there. Has his receiver out there who's quickly brought down by Dante Martin. After Dario Walker made that reception to get it down to the Howard 39-yard line. As you look at he said, quick drop, go right out there, hope the defense is back, give him enough for what he did, but he closed very well. That's what's important on those tight and those little quick passes. That defensive back has to close and has to make the tackle. Gain of four on that second down pass. So now a third down and nine for the Spartans. And this is where the Bison need to get off the field. As you look at Dante Martin, who just made that excellent close and stop on that play. Three wide for the Spartans as Howard shows blitz. They come after Brown. Brown gets it off, has a man out there, and cannot hit the intended receiver, Dario Walker. If he had hit him, Walker could have walked into the end zone. But really what they were doing was Howard was bringing the linebacker as well as the safety. They blitzed him a little bit, put pressure on him. You see, they're bringing more people than they can block. Indoor Cooper almost gets there, make him overthrow the ball. What happened? He threw it before he wanted to throw it, and that was the scheme of the defense. So now Billy Rudd will punt for Norfolk State, stands at midfield. And quick six is what they call him, back for the Bison. And he will not get a chance to handle this one as the ball bounces and goes out of bounds at about the four-yard line. Not a pretty punt, but an effective punt. Went out the four-yard line, and when you have that, you got, that's really a nice punt. So right now, let's take it down to our sideline reporter this afternoon, Susan Stark. Susan, what do you have for us? Hi, today one of these teams will be breaking free from their losing streak. Before the game, I had a chance to talk to both coaches, and Coach Bailey says, He's going to cover the field more and hoping he's corrected his kicking game. Meanwhile, Coach Adrian says his team will show good ball control and work on not giving up those big plays. Tony Ty, back to you. All right, thank you, Susan. And the Bison start first and 10 of their four-yard line. This is Carlos Whitaker on the carry, and Whitaker struggles over the five to about the eight-yard line. And you just heard Susan say that Coach Carey Bailey wants to have more ball control and you talked about it before the game he needs to have more balance on offense and that's what you need and when you say ball control in the early part of the game you want to establish that run we know you can pass but establish a run and you need that with this offensive line as you can see got a lot of young players on there but at the same time they have to establish the run second down and four for the bison after Whitaker picked up six on that first down carry and again here's Whitaker on the carry, Whitaker with a 10 to about the 15, maybe the 16-yard line. And that's the first down for the Bison. And you know, Whitaker came into this game with 298 yards rushing, and we can say this is right off tackle. And what you do is let your lineman get one-on-one, -on -one, cut down that nice linebacker and a good run by Whitaker. I like him because he can run not only inside, but outside, and he's a tough runner. The front line for the Bison, McClellan, Eric Acosta, Sean Wolford, Chapman Young, and Michael Russell. Russell. Tight end is Brian Blake. So there's a penalty. First down. It's going to be a, a penalty after the play on Orlando's hood or check that number six for the Bison. And that'll bring up a first down and 10. They'll mark it back, but still be first down for the Bison. So there's the man with the infraction for the Howard Bison. That was Brandon Drayden. Uh, what, what was the infraction time? I kind of missed it right there. I don't know if you got it, but late flag. As we look at Norfolk State's backs and receivers when we saw earlier uh, on offense, but now the, the Spartans are on defense. And here's Howard again with a handoff. And this will be Ramon McElrath Bay, and he'll get over the 10 to about the 11-yard line. 
You see, you know what has to happen. They, they, and one thing I like what Coach Bailey is doing right now, no matter how many yards they gain and what penalties they have, they're trying to establish the running game. And Ty, over the prior weeks, that's what we said they needed to do, whether they go out with five wide receivers, start running at this team. Well, you might want to do that, too, because Norfolk State is last in rushing defense in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Second down and five for the Bison. 10-41 left here in the first quarter. No score between the Spartans and your Howard Bison. Hager under center. Again, play action fake. Looking. Has a man out there and will make a completion, but now incomplete as the ball was caught by Mackel Rathbay, but as soon as he was hit, he fumbled it out of bounds, so that'll bring up a third down and five at the 12-yard line. Had he even caught that, it was going to be at the line of scrimmage or maybe a yard gain. But I think that they need to set up is at least try to gain two or three yards on each play. Hagler had a three or four step drop right there. He threw it fairly well. But at the same time, I don't know why you run a play that does not gain any yards. Third down and five for the Bison. Ball at their 12 yard line. Now Hagler goes in shotgun formation. Looking. Quick pass out there, has his man, and that's Drayden. Drayden first down up to the 25-yard line. Nice improvement we've seen from Hagler. We've been concerned over the prior weeks that when he had a three-step drop, he'd either throw it high or low, but that time, as you see, he dropped back in the quarterback, still eyeballing a little bit, two-step drop right to the, to the end pattern, and that's a very hard pattern to be covered. Brandon Drayden, a freshman, 5'8", 170 from Miami, and he's a playmaker, so those types of guys you've got to get into the game. Yes, because they're quick. They can take that and go to the yard with them. First and 10 bites, and here's Carlos Whitaker on the carry, and Whitaker not going too far. As number one, Dennis Marsh and company, along with Ray Jennings and A.J. Harris, the front line for this 3-4 defense, make the stop after about a gain of one. And right, Dennis Marsh, he comes in with pretty good credentials. Not only is he a big guy, 6'5", 300, but he comes in with 35 tackles. And I do not like him. I like Whitaker. He can run outside, but run him more inside. They're running him at the 6 and 7 hole, which is between the tackle and tight end. Run him more between the guard and the tackle. Second down, 9 for the Bison. Ball at the 26-yard line. No score with 9.27 left in the first quarter. Now the quarterback, Hagler, moves under center, sends a man in motion. And here's a quick pass out there to Drayden. Drayden spin moves, but will not go anywhere. As staying home and making the tackle is Don Carey, number 27, the quarterback for the Norfolk State Spartans. As you see, this is not a pass, it's more of a lateral. He threw it behind the line of scrimmage, and what they were trying to do is get a block out there and see if quick six could make a move and make the man miss. But the defense played it very well. I don't like those because you're throwing it behind the line of scrimmage when you have no possibility of gaining yards if it's read correctly. Now third down and 15 after a loss of five on that play. There's Brandon Drayton right there, the playmaker for the Bison. And here is Hagler in shotgun formation. 3-4 defense for Norfolk State. No blitz being shown. Hagler stepping back, looking to pass, looking. Has a man open. It's Drayton, but cannot make the reception up at the 37-yard line. So they'll bring up a fourth down and punting situation for the Howard Bison, who Tony have had problems in the kicking game all season. And even more problems now because John Mendoza is out for the season with knee surgery. Dennis Bieberg is out for the season, so the punter, Patrick Wolf, will be handling all the kicking chores. And those two guys had a problem they were in, and now it's going to be up to the, the people up front to really protect them, get down and cover as well, because they have had a lot of problems with the kicking game. So here, come, here comes the punt from about the six-yard line by Wolf. Norfolk State with two men back at the 30. And the ball will take a bounce, and Howard will down the ball as it hits a Bison player at about the 35-yard line. Actually hit him at about the 38, but they'll spot it at the 35-yard line. Patrick Wolf with a decent kick that time, Tony. Yeah, and as you see, but it, I did not like the protection. There was someone there putting pressure on him. Okay, we know Wolf is a little bit slow in kicking the ball, but at the same time, those guys up front, before they release and go and cover, they must also protect him and keep the rushers out. There's Coach Carey Bailey for this hour at Bison, looking for their second win this season. A 44-yard punt that time by Patrick Wolf, so first and 10 for Norfolk State. Their second possession, they'll take it at their own 35-yard line. Dennis Brown, the quarterback, moves under center. Brown, one setback behind him. That's DeAngelo Branch, and Branch will go to his right and get nowhere as indoor Cooper 
one of the men on the stop for the Bison, along with Patrick Jean Marie. Indoor Cooper is making the play, but the defensive line made the play. They stacked up the offensive line very well, penetrated into the backfield. The running back tried to bounce off. Indoor Cooper, which is very good at that when he came off the pop. Indoor has the speed and the size to get there and make the hit. Second down and 10, 7.56 left in the first quarter. Brown moves back in shotgun formation. Brown, a dangerous runner. Takes a snap, looking to pass, has a quick pass out there to his wide receiver, Daryl Dickerson. Dickerson is stopped right away by Indoor Cooper. Now we've seen Indoor Cooper make two passes. Uh, he's made two tackles on passes, made a couple on runs. He's very active today, and that's what you need from this big All-American, I will say, linebacker. But what they're trying to do in Norfolk is trying to pick that zone apart, throw those small passes. How would it take that? As long as you can keep them down to two or three yards of reception, they will not get 10 for a first down. Third down and six for Norfolk State. Ball at the 40-yard line. Five receivers on this set for Dennis Brown and company. Three-man line for the Bison, who moves it to a four-man line now. Brown has time, has his pass out there, has his receiver at midfield, and that's Dario Walker, and Walker will move the chains for a Norfolk State first down. That was all due to no pass rush. He had very good coverage. That zone was working. You cannot blame that on the zone. You cannot blame that on the coverage. What you blame that on is no pass rush whatsoever. The quarterback stood back there for a while, was able to pick out his secondary receiver, throw it to the sideline, pick up the five yards. So first and 10, Norfolk State ball at the 49-yard line. And here you see Daryl Walker, and there's Dennis Brown, the Spartans quarterback, in shotgun formation. D'Angelo Branch right next to him. Brown takes it and runs it right behind Branch. Brown gets into Bison territory as a late flag comes in. Now, you might notice that the flags are going to be pink this afternoon because the MEAC conference is doing their part to help breast cancer awareness. And so uh, in, in conjunction with that, the referees are going to be throwing pink flags this afternoon. That's a very good point, and I like that you pointed it out to me. Now what we're seeing is they're trying to establish the run, but at the same time, Howard is playing very good run defense right now. As we said, you have to watch this quarterback because Brown can either run or throw. Ten yards, repeat, first down. Holding on the offense, so they'll march Norfolk State back ten yards. And that'll be back into Spartans territory at their own 43 and a half yard line. That was Andy Raymer, who was on the hold that time for Norfolk State. That's a 6 4 senior from Menifee, California. So now, first down and 10, back in the 44. Brown, shotgun formation. D'Angelo Branch back there with him. Brown, five step drop, now being forced out, runs out, being chased, will get back over into Howard territory at about the 45 yard line. So a gain of 14 for Dennis Brown, who can scamper when he needs to. Good and bad play. You see the quarterback sets up, looking at the receiver, get a pretty good rush, inside rush, but he runs in between the defensive end and the defensive attack, yeah, got too much speed to get outside. You have to keep him in, and then the linemen need to stay in their lane. As you can see, you got three people over here, one over here, and he falls. And this defensive tackle, just he, in a foot race with him, he cannot win. Saki Kirkula on the foot race with uh, Dennis Brown, and he lost that foot race that time. So a second down and three for Norfolk State. Brown again, shotgun formation. Howard with the five-man front showing blitz. And here's D'Angelo Branch going to the right. Branch gets down to about the 40 for a first down for the Spartans. You had to respect the run because Branch came in with six, uh, 698 yards. Therefore, he can run the ball, even though they do not run it as well as other teams, but they can run the ball, and they're trying to have a balanced attack now. Branch, a homegrown product from Norfolk, Virginia, for this Norfolk State Spartan team. That brings up a first down for the Spartans with 555 left in a rapidly played first quarter. Dennis Brown shotgun formation. Howard with a 4-3 look this time on defense. Brown changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Pumping his fist together, whatever that means. Now he takes a snap, back to pass, and he floats one out there and intended for the wide receiver who is covered out there. Looking for interference with Daryl Dickerson, but there was no interference on that play as he was covered that time by the Brandon Buford for the, for the Bison. And Buford almost did get a penalty for the simple reason. He had no reason to, to touch this guy. As you go, good, good pressure to bring him 
indoor up the middle, put a little pressure. He overthrows it once again. The ball is far out of bounds. Therefore, he was just making sure he did not catch it. But when you have a official right there, you do not need to do that. And there's Pete Adrian, the head coach of these Norfolk State Spartans. Adrian's team is 2-6, and six, but they could easily be 6-2. and two, But they've had some miscues late in their games to cause that record. Brown back to pass. Has a man out there and hits him in the seams. That's Jamar Johnson, the 6'4 senior from Norfolk, making the catch for a gain of seven. Patrick John Marie made the stop for the vice at number 53. Yeah, Patrick John Marie has made a lot of plays. You see, once again, we get that zone defense, no pass rush. John Marie there, indoor there, but at the same time, they're dinking and picking them. Now he got a third and short, but he's still eyeballing, so now they can get a little tip on this. Watch this quarterback's eyes. He's looking right at his receiver. Watch this quarterback's legs this time, Tony. Third down and three, and Brown can't run for the first down here because Howard only has a three-man front. Brown with five receivers in this set, and now there's a whistle and a timeout by the Bison. It looked as if both teams were confused. It looked like Brown wanted to call a timeout as well as the Bison. And we'll take a timeout, too. Come back with no score. Howard and Norfolk State right here on HBCU Sports. Would like www.nsu.edu for more information. Ty Miller and Tony McGee back here in Washington, D.C. with this NBC game between Norfolk State and Howard. No score with about 4 minutes and 56 seconds left here in the first quarter. This is the eighth play of this drive coming up. So far, 33 yards and 3 minutes and 27 seconds. We're going to take it off the clock by Norfolk State's offense. Dennis Brown moves under center. Now for the first time, Norfolk State has their fullback, Tommy Moore, in in front of D'Angelo Branch. And there's a man jumping offside, and here's Branch bouncing it, bouncing it, and will get down to about the 26-yard line. Initially, as you see before the timeout, they were they had the quarterback, Brown, in a position for a pass, and they had him in the shotgun. During that timeout, they changed that terminology. What they did is ran at the left the left side of Howard's defensive line, kicked it in, out, and, get the ta and blocked the tackle down and ran through that hole that was wide open there, but the linebacker was cut off, which was indoor Cooper. Gain of six for Branch that time, so a second down and four for the uh, Spartans. First down and ten, rather, for the Spartans, or the first down carry. And here again is Branch running to the outside. Branch with a seam. Branch inside the five. And Branch actually gets out of 10 to about the seven yard line. Now, that was an excellent play by Branch, but that was an excellent mistake by Howard. And no containment on the right yeah. side of the defense. That's exactly what happens if you look at this. They're running outside. This is the end. 58, Corey Berry. He takes the inside route. One thing you always know. You cannot take the inside. If you're the outside person, whether you're a linebacker or a defensive end, you keep the play on the inside of your shoulder. As you can see, he was blocked in, no contain. First down and goal for Norfolk State. Ball on the eight-yard line. Four minutes left here in the first quarter, no score. Brown, shotgun formation, inside handoff. Down to the four, make it to two-yard line, goes running back. And that's Takeem Hedgeman on the carry. Number 22, Hedgeman, a freshman from Charlottesville, Virginia. And they have, he has some pretty good stats also. He, he a decent running back. He's up with 177 yards and two TDs. And he's more of a speed back. But what Howard has to do is control that line of scrimmage a little better. With them going with the three-man line, those outside linebackers got to do a good job of playing the run also. Gain of two, second down and goal at the six-yard line. Again, shotgun formation for the quarterback, Dennis Brown. Brown takes it. Again, Hedgeman on the carry. Hedgeman gets inside the five, and he'll go down to about the four, maybe the three-yard line, to bring up a third down and goal. Now, right there, we've seen plays, and they're jockeying back and forth, but right there, they got a good push on the Howard's defensive line. You cannot get to be knocked off the ball two or three yards on, off the line of scrimmage, and therefore giving the running back an opportunity to make the run and make cuts. Hedgeman comes out after picking up two yards, so it'll be third down and goal at the four-yard line. Indoor Cooper is out for the Bison with a shoulder injury. That information courtesy of Ron Harris. Thank you a lot, Ron, our spotter. And when he sees something happening on the sideline, he'll let us know. Third down and goal, 238 left here in the first quarter. No score. Man goes in motion. That's Dario Walker. Brown looking, looking. Brown with a seam can run for the end zone, and we'll have a Norfolk State touchdown. Touchdown, Norfolk State. 
And the Spartans go on top 6 nothing with 2.28 left here in the first quarter. Without the leader in there, and, and then Dor Cooper down there with his pads off on the sideline. Without him in there, they were able to get to that corner and cut the defensive end down once again and allow Brown, who we said he came in with almost 300 yards rushing, an opportunity to get to that corner and make a big play. Justin Costalot looking for the PAT. Here's a snap. It's down. Kick is up, and it is. Good. So with 2.28 left in the first quarter, new score. Norfolk State 7, Howard nothing. We'll be back with more on HBCU Sports. And we're back in D.C. with Norfolk State leading Howard 7-0 with 2 minutes and 28 seconds to be in the first quarter. The Spartans scored on a 12-play drive, 65 yards. It took 5 minutes and 55 seconds off the clock and a touchdown on a 3-yard run by Tennis Ground. As you can see, he goes out, look for the pass. No one's there. The defense didn't get cut down. The linebackers inside, therefore, we know this young man has some speed to get to the corner. The thing that's problematic about that, and you know the quarterback run, he's there, but you must get containment. You can't come up inside. You must contain this young man and not allow him to get to the corner. James Carter took the inside route. That's the second time we've seen that. Corey Berry did it prior to that. These guys need to keep the play on the inside shoulder and turn it back into the teeth of the defense, whereas they can get help. So the Bison will go back on their attack on offense, and so far in this game, Tony, they have tried their running game as opposed to their passing game. And if you are Howard, do you stick with the running game right now? You stick with it. You have to establish something. You have to force your will, as I always tell you. Stick with that running game. Now you need to shorten the clock up anyway. You're starting to get injured. Indoor Cooper not in there, so you want to keep that ball away from their offense. How do you do that? Ball control, run it, and be tough. And Coach Carey Bailey set to put his team back on offense as Norfolk State sets to kick it off. And this is Justin Castellot who will be doing the kicking chores. Brandon Drayden, one of the men back deep for the Bison, number six, and that's who they would like to see get that ball. Castellot kicks a short kick, and here will be Drayden at the 18 to the 20, 25, 30. Braden sidesteps a guy, 35, 40. 45 or actually the 43 yard line a nice return for Brandon Drayton who Brandon Drayton from Miami of Florida his Northwestern team when he was in high school won 30 straight games and two state straight So the Bison now first and ten at their own 42-yard line, trailing 7-0 with 220 left in the first quarter. Florida Hagler moves under center. Hands off to Carlos Whitaker. Whitaker getting outside to about the 45, up to about the 47-yard line for a gain of five. The play was designed to go into the middle of the line, but Whitaker had good vision, saw that, cut it to the outside, and picked up what he could. That's what I like about this young man. He can get outside. I would not do that as a, a regular place to run him, but at the same time, he does have the possibility of doing that and Terrell Whitehead made the stop for Norfolk State and that's and the guys been making most of their tackles and that's their free safety so I tell you how it goes about their business they can dominate this line of scrimmage second down and six for the Bison Whitaker under center actually it's Hagger under center Whitaker now on the carry and Whitaker trying to get to the outside this time chased out of bounds maybe lost a yard as that was good pursuit that time but Norfolk State's number 21 Josh Anderson their strong safety not a steady diet of trying to get him outside. Now, I know he picked it the first time and was able to get yard, but as you see there, the speed of the Norfolk defense is really is not enabling him to get that. And he can, as I say, get outside, but he's better inside. The thing about the Norfolk State defense is that they are soft in the middle, speed on the corner. So if you're Howard, you want to run north and south. Exactly, and you have your free safety with 63 tackles. So therefore, I tell you that the linebackers and the defensive line is not that great. Third down and six play action fake and Hagler being chased and has to throw it out of bounds as one of those linebackers, Hassan Craig, may put pressure on him and made the stop. And with, we have more on indoor Cooper, the star linebacker for the Bison. Let's go down to Susan Stark to find out what's going on with him. Susan. What one of Howard's star players, number 45, Ender Cooper, 
who is a senior defensive player, has a stinger in his left shoulder. And hopefully he will be back on the field soon because he has a couple of talent scouts out here looking at him. Guys, back to you. All right, Susan, thanks a whole lot. As Patrick Wolf will kick from his own 32-yard line. And Dario Walker is one of the men back deep to receive for Norfolk State. And Walker will make a fair catch at about the 15-yard line. Uh, a stinger, Tony. Let's talk about that. What is Indoor Cooper feeling? When you say a stinger, that's usually when you have a pinched nerve. And as we can say, well, let's say it again. Wolf kicked that one pretty well. Nice punt. But what it is is a pinched nerve in your neck. And usually it'll go down and make you have numbness in your arm. Therefore, you can't feel that arm. And those are the things that they, they can quiet down within a certain amount of time. Sometimes they last for weeks. Sometimes they last just for the game. Sometimes they only last for minutes. But a sting is a very, very hurtful thing, and it hurts when you get it, and you usually will have some kind of numbness in your arm behind that and a lot of pain in your shoulder and arm. And there are five scouts to see Indoor Cooper today. We'll talk more about that. But right now, let's take a break with the timeout on the field. The score, Norfolk State 7, Howard nothing. We're back with more on HBCU Sports. And we're back here on HBCU Sports. Ty Miller and Tony McGee here in Washington, D.C. We're with one minute and nine seconds left in the first quarter. Norfolk State leads Howard 7 to nothing. Now the Spartans go back on their attack. They have a first down and 10 at the 16-yard line. Before the break, we were talking about Indoor Cooper, who has a stinger for the Howard Bison, number 45. And five NFL scouts are in town to see him today. Dallas, New Orleans, Denver, Atlanta, and the Rams. In all, Tony, 12 different scouts have been out to see this young man. And sometimes, I guess, if you want to get noticed, you say you have to play through pain if you can? Yes, you do. And what they usually do with a stinger, what they used to do with us, I know that was back in eons ago, but they would put a horse collar on us where you cannot <laughs> really put it around <laughs> your neck where you can't really turn your head a, a whole lot of different ways. A horse ways. collar? And that's what we called it. And that stopped that stinger. What indoor does need to do is get out there and let them know he will play hurt. That's what scouts want to see. You must have lived there in medieval times. First and ten for Norfolk State. Here's D'Angelo Branch who make it number 22, his backup on the carry that time. And he got outside for a few yards. That was uh, to Keem Hedgeman on the carry. Hedgeman got six yards to get the ball up to the 22-yard line. But all of Howard's defensive linemen and linebackers are not playing the run well. And what they had to do is play that outside well and turn it back into the defense. Now they, don't, they do not have big indoor in there. And now the middle linebacker is not making a ton of plays like he usually is. But... Fundamentally, they have to keep that play inside. Second down and four. Hedgeman again on the carry. Hedgeman looking for running room. But the Howard defense stacks him up there. Number 48, one of the guys on the stop there for the Bison. And that was Will Croner. Croner you know, plays fullback sometime. Also, Saki Kirkland, number 96, helping to make that stop that time. I told you, I like Croner. I like the way he plays. He has a low center jack, uh, gravity. And also, that big two uh, Saki making the play. But really, what made that play was the outside linebacker turn it back into the teeth of the defense. I will keep harping on that because if they do not do that, this team will run on them each and every play successfully. Time running out here in the first quarter. 7-0 it is. Norfolk State on top of Howard. And when the teams change field position here, it will be a third down and four for the Spartans as you look at head coach Pete Adrian at Norfolk State. And with that being the case, the end of the first quarter, Howard's trailing Norfolk State 7-0. We'll take a timeout on HBCU Sports. You're watching Black College Football here on HBCU Sports. We're back here in Washington, D.C. Not a cloud in the sky on this sunny Saturday. Ty Blair and Tony McGee here. Howard trails Norfolk State 7-0 as we head to the second quarter. And the Spartans, once they snap it, will have a third down and three at their own 23-yard line. So far, Tony, your impression of what the Spartans have done? Well, what the Spartans have done is really running the ball, trying to mix it up pretty good, but also putting the ball in the hand of Dennis Brown, whereas he can make a play running our passing. So really what he's doing is controlling the game. And there's Dennis Brown right there with a third down and three. Brown asking for the snap count, and there comes a pink flag, and that will be illegal motion on Norfolk State. Dead ball prior to the snap. Ball start, number 60. Offense, five yards. It remains third down. So third down and eight now. Other NBA action going on this afternoon. First quarter score, Delaware State trailing South Carolina State 6 to nothing. South Carolina State, the second-ranked team in black college football. Delaware State, 
for defending MEAC champions. That game being played down in Dover, Delaware. So third down and eight for Norfolk State. Ball backed up to their 17-yard line. The Spartans in their green pants with their yellow jerseys and yellow helmets. Dennis Brown, shotgun formation, single set back right near him. Three men in the set. Brown takes it back, looking, has a pass out there, and Jamari Johnson makes the catch, and they say it's out of bounds as a flag comes in from the back judge. That was a great catch. I don't know what happened there, but it looks to me as if he made that reception. I saw them working on that during the whole warm-ups, and they were working on the receiver getting close to the, the out-of-bounds marker and having a defensive player on him and the receiver adjusting his body to make the catch. And that's exactly what they were working on. That was an excellent play by the And there's receiver. the pink flag in honor of breast kick. Breast Awareness Month, Breast Cancer Awareness Month here. And here's the call for the referee. We have pass interference, offense, penalties decline, fourth down. That pass interference call on Jamar Johnson, he was going against Martin December, number 11 for the Bison. And you can see what happened is he pushed off a little bit, and as I tell you, they worked on that pattern readily during the whole warm-up. So that is something we will see again today. And you can see what they're trying to do is use the sideline against the defensive back when they, the receiver gets over there and adjusts himself. But unfortunately, that time, he pushed off to adjust his body. And the receiver never made the catch. So Justin Costellot will punt it out. And this will be Brandon Drayden at the 41. Drayden makes one man miss, but not the next man. As he is tackled by number 21. Josh Anderson for Norfolk State. Everyone is talking about the special teams and the kickers, but it's not just the kickers. You have a unit, and the unit is supposed to first protect and then rush and then try to cover. What you have to do at the same time, you do your job well. And you can see then when the receiver caught the ball, it was three men there, so that tells me that no one's blocking for him. So the Bison, though, have pretty good field position. First down and 10 at the 43-yard line. And we'll see what happens this time as they come out with two receivers wide, one to the left and one to the right. And Ramon McElrath Bay, the deep setback in the eye. Hagler, the quarterback of the center. Play action fake now in the round for Brandon Drayden. Drayden's going to be hemmed up behind the line of scrimmage and gets back maybe to the line of scrimmage, maybe lost one back to the 42. That play took a long time to develop. It took a long time. Xavier Fowler, who is the end defense the uh, tight end over here, was supposed to make the crack right. And you can see Brandon gets the ball. He gives a little bit to try to miss this guy. And here you'll see the tight end coming there. He should have been blocking that guy instead of going back there. What was he going to do, take the handoff from Brandon? I don't know. But he should have been making the block to free Brandon. So second down, 11 for the Bison. As they're backed up to their own 42-yard line. Hagler again under center. Michael Rathbay deep in the eye. Three-step drop, pump fake. Now he throws it out there, and the ball's going to be incomplete. Intended for Orlando's hood. There we go. He's had, that's his second three-step drop. One thing I've noticed on this is three-second drop. The hood must get this young man involved in the game for the simple aspect. He's kind of their go-to guy. He has over... 40 catchers, so you get the ball to him. But Hood, I mean, when you say Hagler, he gets that three-step drop. He has propensity to throw it either high or low. The Bison playing it safe on offense, seemingly in this first quarter. Now with a third down 11, they have to go downfield to get this first down. Four wide receivers in this set. McElrath made a single setback. Check that, make that Brandon Drayton in the eye along with the quarterback. Here's Hagler looking. Had a man open, but could not hit him at the 45 of Norfolk State. That was intended for number six, Brandon Drayton. See, like Drayton is the individual they feel can make the play. But what we need to see is this another three-step drop, because that was a low pass. Drayton was right there. You see, one, two, three. There we go. And now he throws. The first one was high. That one was low. It's something about that three-step drop. And the thing that you see with Hagler, three steps, I don't know, he seems to throw down low or high with that, but when you take him back seven and let him come up to five, he throws a lot better. Patrick Wolf back deep to kick for the Bison. High snap, but he gets it off in a nice spiral out there. That's going to drive the Norfolk State punt returner back to the 10. Up to the 15, and will be dragged down. No, he gets away and makes a move up over the 20 to about the 22-yard line. Now, that's what I call coverage. That's what you need to do. You need to get him down there, make him string it out, use his blockers up, and then get someone on him to take him down. And then you'll have a gang of people coming to help you. 
Dario Walker on the re, on the kick on the return rather it was a 47 yard kick and a 12 yard return by Walker. And you can see penetration right there and there's Croner again. He makes him turning back in to the people the people coming down and then you get all your players that that's how you play special teams. So first and 10 Norfolk State they lead it seven nothing with 13 36 left in the first half. And there again is Walker on the return. Always make him turn in, make him have to go back, not let him get to the corner. They need to do the same thing defensively. Here's a man going in motion. And Brown, the quarterback, takes it. Quick hit out there to the fullback. And the fullback bulls his way. That's uh, number 40, the big fullback. Sean Childress, make that the tight end. Sharon Childress for Norfolk State. They're playing a man zone, and when I say that, they're playing man on one side, zone on another. But the quarterback needs to throw it right here in that little zone area, and let's see it behind the linebacker, in front of the deep the back. Let that fullback come out of the backfield and get it to him, and he picks up positive yardage. If they're going to play that man zone, which is man on one side, zone on the other, that zone side has to make the play. Gain of 11, first down and 10, and here's Walker. Up to about the 45, make it the 46-yard line, make it D'Angelo Branch on the carry for Norfolk State. Now, Norfolk State has found out we can run the corners, and that's what they're doing. As you can see, go right to the corner, kick the end now cut off the, the defensive tackle, which is Kroner, and he's really not a defensive tackle. He's a, a, a fullback by trade, but at the same time, you cut that, lot, shut, hit the linebacker, knock him out, knock the defensive end in, and you have a lane to run there. Branch picked up another first down, so the Spartans now have the ball up to their 45-yard line. 12.50 left before halftime. Dennis Brown, shotgun formation, two men back. And here's a fake, and a man wide open. Childress, the big tight end, running down to the 15, knocked down at about the 13-yard line. That was wide open, Tony. Just not playing your defense. If you look at this, a normal play, he just leaks out. He's right there in the open. No one in that middle can even look for it. Therefore, that was a blown coverage somewhere. That someone needed to pick him up as he come out. As you'll notice right there, it was quick. No one there. I, they bit on the play action, and they thought it was a run. Everybody come up and play the run, and you have someone running free in your defensive backfield. And Childress picked up the number on his uniform, 40 yards on that big pass play. First down and 10 for Norfolk State at the Howard 15-yard line. They lead 7-0. Here's Dennis Brown faking, being chased out of the pocket. Brown running back to his right. Brown trying to pick a block up. Gets down inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line for a gain of 7. You can clearly see without their leader in there, and that's Indoor Cooper. You can clearly see right now that this defense is kind of really reaching and trying to find something. What someone needs to do is step up right now. You're going to have injuries. We've seen James Carter play well. We've seen Corey Berry. But if you see Endor down there, it must be more than a stinger. If it were a stinger, they would have ice on him and try to get him back in. For him to be sitting there with no, with a towel over his head and no pads on, that's a problem. First down and goal. I'll make a second down and four. And that was Branch on the carry, and Branch chased back inside. Saki Kirkler making the stop for the Bison. What will happen when you lose a big guy like Endor, first of all, your defense has lost the number one player, so they're in shock. So what they'll do, they'll walk around a little bit, dazed for a while, but then someone needs to make a play. Once that someone makes a play, someone else will make one. You can't give up because you've lost one player. Even though he's a great player, you must play more as a defensive unit. Now, with the pads off and the ice on, does it mean he's out for the game? Well, he's out for the rest of this half at least, but I see him continuing to try to move it, and it looked as if it had, it had loosened up somewhat. They're probably evaluating at half. Third down and four, ball at the nine-yard line for Norfolk State. Brown takes a snap. Brown throws a fade out there, and Jamar Johnson makes the catch in the end zone for a Spartan touchdown. That is that pattern that they worked on time and time again, and what they do is fade away from the timeline, Get inside the deep of the back, let the quarterback just throw it up and the receiver adjust his body. As you can see, they were going there right away. He looks right over there, throws it up towards the, the sideline, and the only place, the only person to get it is his wide receiver. Martin nice December throw. listed at 6-1, and the receiver 
Johnson listed at 6'4". I think he has a few more inches on Mr. December than that. And that's what, you know, that fade route would do. If you have a big receiver, it's two routes that they can run. They can run that quick end or that fade. And they were running the fade there. And then a lot of them, they got these big receivers that can make that catch. And on Sportsmanlock conduct on Norfolk State for a celebration after that touchdown. So it's going to be assessed on the kickoff 15 yards. But here comes the PAT. Castellot will attempt it for Norfolk State. Johnson threw the ball down on December. When December was on the ground. He threw it down and threw the ball on top of it. And here's Costalot kicks it up, and it is good. So a new score with 10 minutes and 33 seconds left here in the second quarter. The Norfolk State Spartans now lead the Howard Bison by the score of 14 to nothing. We'll take a timeout and come back for on HBCU Sports. And we're back here at HBCU Sports. Ty Miller and Tony McGee, where the Norfolk State Spartans lead the Howard Bison 14 to nothing. That fast drive, six plays, 77 yards. It took three minutes and three seconds. A nine yard pass from quarterback Dennis Brown to the wide receiver, Jamar Johnson. And Johnson spiked the ball. That's number 11 right there. Johnson who spiked it after the touchdown reception on Martin December, the defender. So Norfolk State will be assessed a 15 yard penalty on the kickoff, Tony. And you never know, this may be something to help Howard get a little momentum. You do not have to do that. You made the play. You made a nice catch. You got the touchdown. You do not need to throw it on there. Speaking of Norfolk, what they have done is put together a very good offensive series. And what they're doing is they're utilizing their quarterback, allowing him to throw and run. They're running the ball, and then they're doing that fade route. If you'll notice, every series, that's what they're doing. Howard, as we said, right now, they're in a little bit of transition. They're going without their signal caller as well as their best player. So now they must play. They can start this by getting a good field position on this kickoff because now they had a 15-yard penalty, so that gives you 15 more yards. Get a good run back right now and let your offense work. Castellite will kick it out for the Spartans from his own 15-yard line. Brandon Drayden back deep along with Martin December for the Bison. Here's Castellite's approach, and this will be Martin December after 21. December 25. 30, 35, 40, up to about the 43-yard line to start the drive where they started their last drive. And, you know, that was very good run by December. Day. You remember a few years ago when that's what he was doing mostly when he was a quarterback, a wide receiver, running back, kickoff returner, then defensive back. We said he was an excellent special teams player, and that's what they need on special teams. Give this offense a short field. Give them less field to work with and give them more of opportunity. Now, if I was Coach Bailey, I would still stick with my game plan. But as we see, he's gone to the five wideouts, so now they have abandoned the running game. The Bison need a spark, and let's see if the passing game does it for them. As Hacker goes in shotgun formation, three-step drop, pats his feet, throws it out there, and intended for the wide receiver, incomplete as... Daly Gunter was the intended receiver, but that was nowhere near Daly Gunter. And there you you said it when you said three-step drop. Right away, that's a red flag going up because when he does a three-step drop, I don't know why he has a problem. Sometimes he, he'll throw it low, high. Sometimes he throw it off his back foot. But that three-step drop or if shorter seems to give. What about the padding of the feet, though? Sorry, excuse me for it. But what about the padding of the feet when he did? I don't know if it's so much the foot or if it's the motion. Again, a three-step drop. And this time he's going to be chased out of the pocket, runs it out, gets good yardage midfield into Norfolk State territory for a first down at the Spartan 40 yard line. And very well could have been a face match. Now that's what you like to see a young man do. Make a quick decision. And in prior games we said he did not make a quick. As you see it, he's there, no man there. He tries to look for a secondary. He tucks it down and get positive yardage rather than standing there and taking a sack. 15 yard gain for the quarterback, Floyd Hagler. <laughs> And one thing we did see, he did look in the middle first then he looked to his, his right. So we like to see that he is looking at safety also. First and 10 at the Norfolk State 40. Again, a quick pass picked off by Norfolk State. And running the other way for the end zone is Joshua August for a Norfolk State touchdown. 61-yard touchdown return of an interception from Floyd Hagler. I guarantee I guarantee when you see this, and when you look at it, I guarantee that he would have looked at his receiver the whole time, and the defensive players looked at his eyes, knew exactly where he was going to throw it. I'm thinking of Hagler. Now, when we get an opportunity for a replay, let's watch his eyes and his head. He goes back, 
He's looking right there where he's going to throw it. He never looked anyone off, and he threw it right to the defensive player. That's what we're talking about. You always say, what are you talking about, eyeballing? That's what that is. And check that, make it cool when Hammond on the return, the linebacker for the Spartans. And that makes it a 21-0 game. We'll take a timeout and come back with more on HBCU Sports. And we're back here in Washington, D.C., where Norfolk State celebrating right now. 9.43 left before halftime. The Spartans with a huge 21 to nothing cushion on the Howard Bison. The last touchdown was a 61-yard return for a TD by Corin Hammond. And that was a fourth interception return for a touchdown this year off the arm of Howard's quarterback, Floyd Hagler. And one thing that we say that Hagler has to do, and we know this is his first full year of really starting, but he has to start looking those receivers off, looking those defensive backs off. Susan Stark is doing our sideline reporting this afternoon. Let's go down to her right now. Susan. Hi, we have Ashley Simpkin, the captain of the cheerleading squad, and she's going to tell us about Safio. Can you tell us about what, what this shirt is? Sure. Safio is student um, athletes for educational opportunities. And what it have is a t-shirt that says student athletes for life. And you have my picture on here. It's promoting um, educational opportunities for students who are also athletes. Well, tell us, is it, is it hard being a student and an athlete? Um, it's definitely hard, but I've always been involved in athletes. And I, I've been in athletics since I've been in high school, so I was able to work, cheer, and, you know, go to school. So I was easy to me to adjust when I came to college. Great. Sounds like a lot of fun. All right, guys, back to you. All right. Thank you, Susan. And as we get back to action here, Norfolk State will be kicking out to the Bison, who are down 21 to nothing. So, Tony, the Bison need to spark an offense. And they have to get something going. But would you abandon the running game right now? No, and I would not have abandoned it the last time. I think right now you were 14 down, you're 21 down now, but you have to establish something. As we can notice, and we say that with Norfolk, they have established a game plan. Howard has not. Pooch kick by Justin Castle out that Howard will fair catch at the 35-yard line. And that was a good piece of strategy because they were trying to keep the ball away from number six, Brandon Drayton. Exactly. He's been there one big threat that they've had all day. What Howard needs to do right now is settle down. You're 21 down. Don't get into the thought process that we've lost this game already. I've seen teams come back from 21 down. They just need to start and what will happen with a young team, somebody will do something to get that spark going. They need that on both offense and defense. Well, they come out five wide in this set. Hagler in shotgun formation again. Three receivers to the left and two to the right. Norfolk State in this traditional 3-4 defense. Hagler back in shotgun formation, directing traffic. He takes a three-step drop, now being chased out, now has to run out of the pocket, and he'll get over the 35 to about the 37-yard line as one of the linebackers, number five, Mike Alphonse, came up to make the stop for the Spartans. And what we're seeing, and one thing we have seen, and we've also said, okay, not looking at receivers off, but we've seen Hagler make more quick decisions. Now when you look at Norfolk, their defense is very mobile. Their defensive line, as we said, they do not make a lot of tackles, but they eat up space. The linebackers move around. So now what, what the Bison have to do is figure out how to penetrate that. Second down and seven, and a quick pass out there intended for Daly Gunter. Nearly intercepted because Gunter had his hand on it, but fumbled it away, and he was fortunate the ball wasn't picked off again. Not a bad play, though. It was right on target. It was just sometimes you have to give the defense back. But still, he's looking directly at the receiver he's going to. He must start looking these defensive backs off. Third down and seven for the Bison. Ball back at their 37 with nine minutes and three seconds left here in the second quarter. Norfolk State's on top, 21 to nothing. Plucking Hagler's defense. When a receiver gets his hand on the ball, he must catch that also. Here's Hagler, shotgun formation, five receivers, looking, has a man open, but throws it behind the intended receiver, Arlandis Hood. That time he threw the ball at his feet. I don't know, and he was in a shotgun. He went back two or three steps again, 
it's something psychologically to me, and I'm just saying that I don't know that for sure, that when he goes back, Hagler goes back three steps on any kind of drop, he seems to have a problem. But when he goes start at seven and come up to five, when he's moving forward, he seems to do a lot better. Patrick Wolf back to kick. Dwight Fluker Berry, number 33, and Daryl Walker, number 19, back deep to receive this punt for the Norfolk State Spartans. High snap. And Wolf gets it out there, end over end kick that will bounce at the 33 and be down by the Bison at the Norfolk State 28 yard line. Now, you know, uh, throughout this game, we got to say Wolf has done a very good job. There's Hagler there, and someone needs to be speaking with him. Quarterback coach or something saying, Look, you need to set, get your feet set, stop throwing off of your back foot, throw off your forward. Look your receivers, uh, look your defensive backs off and you help yourself. He can do those couple things. Or he has the arm. He also has the ability to make plays, but he must get his rudiments or his techniques down a little bit. Coach Kerry Bailey, what's he thinking right now, Tony? Here we go again. <laughs> and I'm telling you, he, he's seen this show over and over, but what he asked me, say, what can I do to make my team consistent? First and 10 for the Spartans at the 30-yard line. Dennis Brown, shot confirmation. And with a lead of 21-0, they seem like they want to put some more points on right now. And they go deep. Walker's out there. Walker is going to be interfered with. And there's the flag. Because the defensive back never looked at the ball. Never looked. And he tackled the receiver before the ball was there. Brandon Buford on the infraction for the spark for the bison. And as you see, Buford had it pretty good, but he was afraid of that speed. And I think he misjudged the speed. And the man got behind him, and before the Pass ball, was there, a lot of times they number twenty-seven, little play. defense, yeah. fifteen yards from the line of scrimmage, automatic first down. If he would look back as if he's making the play, as, it, as you can see right there, he never looked back. No pass rush to begin with. Then he's throwing it. There it is. He's not looking back. You must look back when you watch the receiver's eyes, but he hits it before the ball gets there. Never gave him an opportunity. A lot of defensive backs watch the receiver and then try to watch their motion when they go to make the catch, and that's where. They make their mistakes. That's why Jerry Rice used to say he never put his hands up to the last moment because a good defensive back, Daryl Green, did that excellently. Will watch that receiver. Once he make a move, you make a move. First and ten for the Spartans at the 45-yard line now. Brown shotgun formation. D'Angelo Branch back there, but here's a quick pass too high for the intended receiver that time. That time he hung with Daryl Walker out to dry. Some kind of way with them playing this zone and this 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 man zone, which they're manning up one man and zone another side. They must get some pressure. So they may have to go to a zone and they may have to go all man and merely bring some people off the ends, bring some linebackers and some safety because they need to get pressure on this guy because he's not the greatest thrower. He only came with a little over a thousand yards. We know he can run the ball, but make him beat you by throwing the ball. Second down and 10 for the Spartans at the 45-yard line. Eight minutes and 41 seconds before the half. And here's the end of round play. Walker being chased out. Now Walker looking for some running room. Gets up to midfield and out of bounds at the 48 into Bison territory. That's a gain of seven. You have to make that play. When you diagnose the play and you read it, you got to cover. Keep it on the side. There's that containment again. They read the play well. Okay, here you go with the reverse. Defensive end. Come up field. Do not come inside. Do not let them on the outside. Play it and keep it in containment. We have said that time and time again. You cannot take the inside route. That is the worst place to do it. James Carter did that. He diagnosed and played the play well, but then he took the inside. All you young football players out there, you always keep the play on your inside shoulder, Se not on the outside. Second down and three now for the Spartans. Again, shot confirmation. There's a man in motion. That's D'Angelo Branch, the running back. Brown, the quarterback, takes it out there, and he hits Branch out there. Near the first down, as a flag comes in. And I'm not sure if that's interference. That might be an interference on the offense, if anything. Might be a pick play. He may be late hit on the quarterback, and I'm hoping it's not. First time they get pressure. That came from the side judge. Illegal shift on Norfolk State. I knew there was something that happened between those two receivers out there. See, we're getting paranoid ourselves. We're, oh, what is it? Is it a hit? Is it a push? Is it a What it is, is they're making a play now, and this could be the thing that turns Howard around. You got 7.59 left in the second. 21 points. Illegal motion, number three, on the offense. Penalties decline, right fourth down. So, that's how the receiver turned up field too soon. It. 
Okay, he comes out. You know, he's up over the line of scrimmage. He never stopped moving, and that's what happened. This receiver, when he was coming up his set, you had to be set for a second before you could take off. He came up, and he was hopping, 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 and he never set himself. That was real legal. So, Billy Rudd will punt it out there for Norfolk State, and Rudd will punt it to Drayden. Drayden makes the reception at the 15 and will be knocked down after a gain of five at the 20. Norfolk State content to keep Howard between the 20s because the Bison, most of this first half, Tony, have had good field position. This might be their worst starting position of the first half. But the one thing that you said in the opening as well that we spoke about, they still haven't established what identity am I going to have? Am I going to be a smash mouth, run the ball, or am I going to pass the ball? Norfolk's co coach knows this, and he knows right now that this is the time they haven't made their dinner, so he can turn his defense and lose. Well, the Bison go back to the running game. Carlos Whitaker goes over right tackle, and Whitaker goes to about the line of scrimmage. So, Tony, maybe they caught a, I guess, a sneak, what, sneak of preview of what you were talking about there in terms of running the ball again. And, you know, what they're not allowing is their offensive line, which they love to do. They, they like to be tough guys, and they let them be tough. I don't care. You're not getting first down passing. Let them go in there, and I like what they're doing. That's two runs, so what? You haven't got a first down. Give them three runs. Give them whatever they need. Try to really start controlling that line of scrimmage. That time, the uh, Norfolk State defense controlled the line of scrimmage as Whitaker picked up only a one to bring up a third down and nine. So the Spartans with a 21 to nothing lead, looking to break a five game losing streak while the Bison on a three game scale. And again, under center is quarterback Floyd Hagler. As you look at one of the injured Bison on the sideline, Jake Cunningham. Hagler under center. Now back to pass. Quick in route to Hood, and Hood cannot make the reception. That's one he should still be running with. Yeah, but it was thrown behind him. If you look once again, you got your quarterback looking at the receiver. The receiver makes a quick end. If he'd have thrown that on rhythm, as well, he's looking right at him, throwing, but it was a little bit behind him. See, that pass should have been on the inside. and he caught it, he'd still be running right now if it would have been thrown in the right position. Patrick Wolf back deep to kick near his own five-yard line for the Bison. Walker back deep to receive it for Norfolk State. Here's Wolf, high kick out there. And this will be Walker at the 34. Walker up to the 40 with, run, with blockers. Walker midfield looking for more. Walker trips and still going down to the 30. Walker to the 20. Walker down to the Howard 14-yard line. Tony, you're speechless. No, if you take a look at this, once again, it comes down to containment, each man doing his job, staying in his lane, and we do not have this. As you see, he comes down. You got players there, but now he gets over behind the wall. He's going on down the line of scrimmage. Look at these guys. They're all that slow running and stuff. You can't have that. This is a time that Kerry barely need to call some of these guys over the sideline and ask them this. Do you want your scholarship? So you're saying it's time for Coach Bailey to do a Mike Singletary. Exactly. You know what? I'm not saying he should do a lot of what Mike Singletary has done, but at the same time, he needs to get tough with these guys because they're not putting the effort out. 21 nothing. Norfolk State on top. Back with more on HBCU Sports. Visit Amtrak.com for details. 6.09 before halftime, Ty Miller and Tony McGee back here at Green Stadium where Norfolk State leads Howard 21 to nothing. The Bison with another injury, and to tell us about that, Susan Stark. Susan. Things are not looking good for Howard, and to make things worse, we have another injured player. Yes, we have defensive back number 20, J.C. Cunningham. He is icing his right ankle, and this means he's out of the game. Tony, Ty, back to you. Okay, Susan, Tony, you've had the ankle injury before. Ankle injuries are pretty tough look, because that is a weight-bearing joint, and uh, when you put that weight on there, which you have to walk on it, uh, some people like me that wear a little more than you is even worse, but at the same time, ankles are pretty tough. Hard to get back. A lot of times, people say they'd rather have a broken something than a twisted ankle because those ankles are very hard and long recovery. First and 10 from the 15-yard line of that 47-yard 
punt return by Dario Walker for Norfolk State. Spartans looking for more points before halftime. Dennis Brown under center. Hands off to D'Angelo Branch. Branch trying to bounce it to the outside, but Patrick Jean-Marie and the rest of the Howard defense will not allow him to do that. And this is where they need to make a stand. You know, one thing I'm always looking for, and as I say, Coach Bailey need to make sure these players do not quit on him. And see, you can't blame everything on the coaches. Sometimes players have a tendency also when you get behind or a season not going well, not to put out the effort. That's what he must keep them putting out the effort. Defense, five yards, repeat the down. Offsides on the Howard defense, so that's going to give the Spartans five yards to the 10 yard line, so a first down and five. Have you ever noticed how uh, also whatever way a team's season or game is going, sometimes the officials seem to fit right into that. Now, you look at the last plays that they're calling, I mean, you know, offside Howard. I mean, there's been offsides we've seen, like they could have called some face masks against Norfolk, but they seem to fall right into that saying, oh, they're a bad team, so they play bad. Well, that was a not a good thing for the Bison that time, that five-yard penalty moving the Spartans closer to another score with 5.50 left in the first half. Now Brown comes out in shotgun formation. Hedgeman and Branch in the backfield alongside him. Takes a snap. Play action fake. No, he hands off to Hedgeman. Hedgeman inside the 10 to about the seven-yard line for a gain of three. And you look at the body language right now on the sidelines of the Howard Bison team, and there is no enthusiasm right now. Well, not on the sideline or the field, and you know that was notable before the game. I did not see a lot of fire like we've seen in the past. Uh, we did not see players rallying with each other. We saw them just going uh, business as usual. Second down and three, and here again is a running play, and it's going to be Hedgeman. And Hedgeman will make it branch into the end zone for another Spartan score. D'Angelo Branch from Norfolk, Virginia, a redshirt sophomore, slashes through the Bison defense to make it Norfolk State 27, Howard 0. And you know, as a freshman, he had three TDs and 371 yards, so this guy know how to get to the end zone. He came in with 600 and 54 yards and six TD, so he knows his way into the end zone. Cast a lap on the PAT. It is up, and it is good. <laughs> Norfolk State well on his way as you look at D'Angelo Branch, who just ran for that touchdown. As you see, straight play, knocking the man. No one, no white jersey on line of scrimmage. All of them put my turn on the inside. I mean, you know, that's just something you can't have. That's at the point of attack. Howard is being beaten there very bad. That drive, three plays, 15 yards, took a minute and eight seconds off the clock. Now Norfolk State well on their way to breaking their five-game losing streak up 28-0 with five minutes left here in the first half. Indoor Cooper, that's good news for the Bison, has put his pads back on. They could have used him on that play, right? Well, I'm not surprised with him being a leader. And as you can notice, what you laughed at, they're putting a horse collar on Indoor Cooper. As I'm saying, to keep his head from going side to side and pinching that nerve again. It seems as though he may not want it, but that horse collar is so important. I had to play a whole year or two with that after I got a couple of pinched nerves. If you do not take care of those nerves, they'll just get more and more irritated. What happened is they'll feel better, feel better, then you pinch them again, and the injury is right back. Is that on the top of your shoulder? Yes, it's right between the neck and the shoulder. So here's a high pooch kick by Castellot that will go out of bounds, and the Bison will get good field position at the 40-yard line. Smart play. Howard needs to do something here. You know, They need to get something on the board before halftime. They, they've got to be consistent either with the running game or – the problem with the passing game, Tony, as you've noted all afternoon, is that Hagler, the quarterback, is eyeballing his receivers. Oh, he's been doing that throughout the year. But what you have to be cognizant of, this North, this Norfolk team, they're coming off five straight losses themselves. So they're not sold on they've won this game. All it would take is one or two plays, and they will go back into their shell just as the, the Howard has gone. But what has to happen is they need to make some plays, and they need to make them quick. Do not put it on the quarterback. Get that identity, tough or whatever, run the ball. First and 10, Bison at the 40-yard line. Hagler, play action fake, inside handoff to the running back. Is that Macarath Bay? We'll check it when he gets up off his back. 
but Howard's uh, picked up three yards that time. Carlos Whitaker on the carry, number four. And that's a misdirection. They had Carlos, he lined up to the left, the right, and he came back to his left, a misdirection play. Very good play. Picked up four yards. When you get four yards on first down, that gives you a lot of options on second and third. Second and six now, 434 left before halftime. Hager under center again. Macarath Bay deep in the eye behind the fullback, Croner. Here's a hand in, handoff, and McElrath Bay cuts it back, gets near the first down up to about the 49-yard line. That's what I like to see. I want to see you at least attempt to run the ball, at least to establish yourself as being tough. I know those offensive linemen are biting at the bit. They get tired of sitting up trying to just. They need to see their man on man, hand it to your man, let him make some moves and make people miss, and now you're starting to see them do something. But what I do not like about that, that script right there, you saw four yellow jerseys. Got to have fewer than that. Third down and one. McElrath Bay runs, and he'll be near the first down marker. It'll be a bad spot if they do not give it to him, and he made it on his own. At the point of attack, he was there, but I thought he got across there, they, and they did get the first down. Now, you've got your first really good first down. You've run the ball consistently. Continue to do that. you got 346 left in the half. Establish something now because, as you know, Ty, the third quarter is an important quarter. Midfield for the Bison now, first and 10, 336 left before halftime. Play action fake. No, another handoff. This is going to be Whitaker. Whitaker's going to be stopped, but not before he gets down inside the 45 to about the 43-yard line. Okay, let's take note. 324 of the second quarter. They're, they're working on their second, second, second first down running the ball. Let's start watching the body language of Norfolk. I'm seeing it already. They said, well, wait a minute. These guys shouldn't be running. They thought that Howard was going to quit. Now Howard can start making some moves. Get some points on the board before halftime. And I tell you, I guarantee you, it'll be a different game second half. Second down and three now. Ball at the 44 of Norfolk State. Another run. Whitaker running to his right. Cuts it back in the middle. Gets to your, near and gets another first down for the Bison. Tackle made by Terrell Whitehead again. And one of the linebackers, Dante Hodge, for Norfolk State. Anytime your free safety come into a game with 63 tackles and the nearest man to it and has 30 and he's a linebacker, that's telling me that you can penetrate that front line, which is that defensive line, and the second line, which is the linebacker. Keep running now, 248 left yes, before halftime. Yes, you half do. Time. Keep running. Maybe hit a big one uh, when you get down close, but right now you're establishing something. Ball at the 39, Hagler under center. Whitaker in the eye. Whitaker takes the, the handoff and will get back to the line of scrimmage. That time the Norfolk State defense rolls up, led by number 95, Ray Jennings, to make that stop. Now, you made a very valid point right there, and as you can see, they got the playmaker in quick sixes. We call him P.J. Hayden. Uh, make, get the ball to him. This is a good time for a play action. You set that up a couple of times with this run. They're looking more for the run right now. now. Right now, on this second and long, you can do either or. This may be good for a play action or run it again. Second down and nine. The Bison need to get down to the 29 for a first down. Here's McElrath, he cuts it back, looking to get outside, but a flag comes in. And this was going to come back as McElrath Bay gets it outside and will go down the sideline for a bison touchdown. But there's a flag back at the 47-yard line. That is too bad. He made an excellent run, and that flag is on a lineman that was away from the play. Ramon McElrath Bay ran it for a touchdown, but it's coming back because that holding call is holding. on the bison. Number 77, offense. Sean Wolfworth on the infraction. Second down. And he's a senior, 6'4", 275, Columbia, North Carolina, uh, South Carolina. You can't have that happen. He was trying to make a play, so no fault. But what you like about here is the running right back. Right there. Point of attack. Yes, he did take it down. But it's an excellent move by the running back to get free and make your things happen. Now, what you're starting to see, even though they call that back, Howard now knows we can't get in the end zone. Let's see what we can keep doing. And all of this is because they've been running the ball. Second down to 19 now, but only 144 left before halftime. And there's a timeout on the field, and the Bison will talk about this because right now might be time to abandon this successful running game on this series and go to the air. They may have to because they do want to get at least three. And I tell you what, that young man right there, I have that's the best run I've seen by a Howard running back this year. Ramon McElrath Bay 
Ray Ray is what they call him. You know, he's seen more playing time the last few games for the Bison. Ray Ray, when he came in, they had a big story about how he was taking care of his younger brother and how he transferred from Clemson and everything. And this young man just hasn't gotten the opportunity because I think of the game plan to really contribute. But when you do see him and you see what he can do, he comes in and show you that he is a very good, very good back. And right here, you can't run this in. That's Gail Sarah type move. Nice hips, good vision, make the man miss, push him down, then have the speed to go all the way and take it to the house. Well, it's real easy, though, when your offensive line is holding to the right. Well, now, that was at the point of attack <laughs> on the other side of the field. Give the guy credit. He did something good there. Second down and 19, 144 left before halftime. Bison back at their 48-yard line. Hagler shotgun formation, back to pass, screen play. Whitaker has it midfield into Norfolk State territory, down to the 40, 35-30, down to the 23-yard line for Bison first down. As I told you, we were going right down, 323. We started to see a little different than the body language. You're starting to see them make plays. But it all began when they started to get two first down. Nice little screen. He did look the other way. Get it to Whitaker. Whitaker is tough out there in the field. Strong, make a man miss, and then make the nice cut back into the teeth of the defense. You're going to get hit for picking up positive yards all the way. Gain of 24 for Carlos Whitaker and another timeout on the field. As you see Whitaker making that first down reception and carry for the Bison. And when play resumes, the Bison will be first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. So, Tony, I guess, you know, running is what you have to do to get back into this game. You don't pass the ball and pass the ball. You have to establish something, and they have established a run here and late they, in the second quarter. They have identity now, and don't think that Pete Adrian doesn't know that, and that's why he's concerned right now. And he also is very much aware that if Howard continues to do this successfully and score some points here, albeit three, that at the same time, they're going to be concerned because they haven't done anything the whole game. Now they start this off with two running, successful first down. They're moving the ball. I tell you, establish a dinner. First down and 10, Bison at the 24-yard line. Floyd Hagler, the quarterback, goes in shotgun formation. Ramon McElrath Bay, the single setback. Takes a snap and hands off to McElrath Bay, down to the 20. Inside the 10-5, touchdown, Howard Bison. As I told you, look at the body language. We can look at those gold and green, green bay-looking uniforms they got out there. You start to see the heads drop. You start to see the men being fitted into blocks. You start to see the offensive line and the Howard putting the pressure on. And now you're starting to see Howard pick it up. As you can see, nice play here. Late draw, delayed draw, that's all it was. But they know Ray Ray can make those type of moves, and he has that speed. Get him more involved in the game. So the Bison get on the board with 119 left here in the first half. But again, the kicking woes continue on the point after attempt. As they were going, they, they were forced to go for two. And it's going to be a 28 to 6 score. Eight plays, 60 yards, three minutes and 42 seconds. They score six, but come up short on the one. So it's 28-6 with 119 before halftime. They may be short in the kicker, but it was not his fault. The ball was dropped by the holder. He never had an a, a opportunity. Brandon Buford dropped the ball. It was not a bad snap. It was just another miscommunication of the special teams, not just the kicker, team. So here it is again, Tony. Here's the touchdown again. Nice run. Ray Ray makes a cut, delayed draw, has the speed, nobody touch him. Even though they did not get the seven, they got the six, and they've changed the momentum of this game. I'm telling you, when you've lost five in a row, you start looking for an opportunity to lose also. So do the Bison go for an onside kick here? Oh, uh, I would. What do you have to lose is 28 to six. And right now, you want to test the thought process of Norfolk, and they're a little bit concerned, even though they're ahead by 22 points. And, you know, that young man we may need to see more of because that's the second straight week that Ramon McElrath has scored a touchdown, a rushing touchdown. Well, if you think about it, in the prior games and early in the year, they were going more to the pass, and they did not give him an opportunity. I felt if they had started using him at the beginning of the year, this guy could be a 1,000-yard rusher. Well, 54 yards last week in a game against North Carolina a and and He's done well this afternoon, so we'll see if we see more of him as the game progresses. I'm sure you will. As Patrick Wolf tees it up, 
And you can tell he's thinking an onside kick. Where am I going to kick this ball? Well, you know, and even if they do not do an onside kick, now's the time for the defense to make a play. So Wolf tees it up, and he will kick it deep. And this will be the returner, taking it at the 16-yard line, up to the 20, 25, 30, straight through the teeth of the defense. Now down the sideline in a little foot race for the Norfolk State Spartans and an 84-yard touchdown for Dwight Luther Berry. <laughs> and it was no fluke. <laughs> But well, it was you. very, very for the Spartans. Yeah, and there you go. Special teams once again. And, and, and as we said, this is a three-facet game. And you can see, nice kick. His wall is building up. He set for the middle, go outside, and they fit into the blockers. I'm speaking of Howard. Then he gets down the sideline. No one there. He can almost walk into the end zone. Ty, I can't run out of sight in the week, and I could have scored on that. You have to now, that's two times in a row we've seen these special team players not get an effort on the punt, now on the kickoff. Cast a lot for the PAT, and that is an 84-yard kickoff return, the third kickoff return for a touchdown against Howard this season. So now the Spartans will kick it back to the Bison. And I'm sure Coach Kerry Bailey, just thinking about the momentum he had, but it was only for a moment. All he can do is coach him. He's not covering, he's not kicking, he's not throwing passes, he's not rushing the passer. He can do the best he can. And you, I tell you what, Pete Adrian there, he's so happy because he can see his team starting to slump somewhat too. But now what you have to do, put that behind you. Go out here and try to do something in this last minute and seven seconds. Castleback kicks it, and this will be December. I'll make it quick six. Brandon, quick six. Drayden taking it up to about the 28, making the 29 yard, 26 yard line. That shows you the failure of these special teams. Now, Drayden, if someone would have blocked that man who ran past him at first, he would have picked up 50 to 20 more yards. Rushing yards for this half. Norfolk State has 90. Howard, not too bad, 80 yards rushing. Most of it on the last drive, which they scored on, but unfortunately the special teams came right back and gave up an 84-yard touchdown. Mm -hmm. So here comes Hagler in shotgun formation with 101 left before the half. Hagler back to pass, looking, throws it out there and has Drayden, and Drayden will tiptoe out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Now you know you criticize Hagler and you criticize the way he throws on three-step drops, but that was excellent then, and that was one of the hardest passes that a quarterback could throw is that out, and he set back. Even though he was still eyeballing, he threw a nice ball there, gave Drayden an opportunity to get outside and stop the clock. First down and 10, 56 seconds left before the half. A score for the Bison would be huge at this point. Any kind of score. Here's Hagler again, shotgun formation. McElrath Bay right beside him. Takes a snap, back to pass, looking, looking. McElrath Bay will fumble what was a lateral, looked to be a lateral behind the line of scrimmage. Wasn't a lateral, but what I do like about that, that was his outlet receiver, and he, he was getting that to him. It wasn't a great throw, but if he had it gotten it to Ray Ray, I think Ray Ray could have did some damage with it, but you have to sit and make the throw. But one good thing, he did look downfield. It wasn't out there. He went to his secondary receiver. Second down and 10, ball at the Howard, 38-yard line, 50 seconds left before halftime. And the Bison back to pass again with Hagler. Hagler looking, now being chased. Running, running, and we'll have to throw it out of bounds. That time, good coverage by that uh, Norfolk State secondary. Good coverage and good makeup speed by that defensive line because it looked as if he had a running lane when he began to run, but they closed that gap re very quickly. So a third down and 10 now for the Bison. Hagner with... Uh, Four wide receivers in this set. McElrath Bay is in the backfield right beside him. Norfolk State with a 3-4 defensive look. Seven defensive backs this time. Hagler back to pass. Looking and throws it out there. Sideline pass and Jamison, did he make the catch? No, he could not get his feet down in bounds. So it's a fourth down and a punting situation for Coach Kerry Bailey's team. Now there we go. We got to that three-step drop. He threw it a little bit outside, threw it a little bit far because Jamison right there, he made a valent effort to catch it, but you got to keep that where the guy at least have an opportunity to get his feet down in bounds. 
My, my mistake on that turn is number 80, Daly Gunner, the freshman. And I guess as time goes on, he'll learn how to get his feet down on catches like that. Yeah, but it really was. It was thrown so far outside, he did the best he could do. Dwight Berry back with Dario Walker again. And here's the punt by Wolf. And Wolf almost had that one blocked. And this time, the Norfolk State punt return team will let it bounce and into the end zone for a touchback. So the Spartans leading 35 to 6. Got to feel good about their first half as you know, there you see Patrick Wolf, who had a pretty good punt that time, 62 yards on that punt. And he's had a good day. You know, we, we talked about special teams and everything, but one thing, he's been very consistent. He's got good distance. He's got good height, giving his covers time to get down and cover these punts. But the covers did not do a good job on that one that they ran back. There you see the Spartans, who are well represented this afternoon on the sideline. A lot of people came down for Virginia, as well as the Norfolk State Spartan Marching Band, who will be performing at halftime, as well as Howard's Marching Band. So the Spartans are going to take this to the half, leading 35 to 6, up by 29. And well on their way, at least right now, to breaking their five-game losing streak. And Tony, as I told you at the top of the show, this is a team that came in 2-6, and six, but a lot of big plays have been given up by their defense. Coach Pete Adrian says they could easily be 6-2, and two. and so far with a good first half, we see why. You can see that Coach Adrian was a little bit concerned as Howard began to run the ball. It's still not over. The big momentum switch was missing of the, the extra point as well as allowing the, the kickoff to be run back. But Howard has found something. Let's see what they do. We've always said third quarters are so important, whether you're losing the game or winning the game. Coach Bailey should go in and say, we're going in this third quarter. We're going to establish ourselves and see what happens. So it's halftime here at Green Stadium in Washington, D.C., where your score, Norfolk State leads Howard 35-6. Back with halftime entertainment after this time out on HBCU Sports. It is halftime here in Washington, D.C., where the Norfolk State Spartans lead the Howard Bison 35 to 6 right now let's take it down to the field and be entertained by the norfolk state marching band
We're back here at Green Stadium in Washington, D.C., getting set for the third quarter of this game between Norfolk State and Howard. There you see the Spartans on top of the Bison, 35-6. to six. Ty Miller and Tony McGee here. Tony, let's take a brief look at the halftime stats in which Norfolk State has 192 yards of offense, while Howard, 123. Not a big disparity there, but you look at the kickoff returns and the red zone chances. Howard with the poor player on special teams in that kickoff return unit. Exactly. If you take away the kickoff return, that long punt return, then you taking away a lot of their their what they had to make them get the score that they have. Also, that one 40-yard pass, you take that away, they've only gained 30 more yards than Howard. So therefore, Howard hasn't done that bad of a job. And for the Spartans, every time they've gone to the red zone, three times they've scored. Now let's take a look at the first half highlights. This is Dennis Brown on this scamper. No containment. What we say you have to keep him inside. Once again, you got the fade route. They worked on that before the game. Each and every play. Now you got him eyeballing right to the linebacker. Throw it. That's another touchdown. That's Missed Gordon that. Hammond on the return. Now, as you got, you got him running back up there. We know he came in with six touchdowns, so therefore you have to keep your eye on him. Here we go. The long kickoff return. Nobody, one white jersey trying to get him. He walks down the sideline and take away the momentum. That is Dwight Flukerberry on that return. Now for the Bison, they did have some success late in the first half. Yeah, you take a look at it. They put the running game back together, and that's what's important. We said if they can run that ball, Whitaker running tough. Whitaker running tough again, making things happen, making more than one man take him down. Then you go and you got you get Ray Ray involved. You got it. Oh, that's Whitaker once again, and that shows you he can also catch the ball. So Whitaker really got this going with his running and catching. And that is Ramon McElrathby. I tell you what, once he gets the ball in his hand, he can make things happen. We're not even showing the one that was called back that he made a tremendous run that the offensive line was holding on. So the Bison did have some brief success there in the first uh, half. And now looking at the stats, rushing yardage, are pro about even, passing yardage, that's where the uh, Spartans have an edge. Hagler has not had the game he's had in the past weeks. Yeah, but you look at them. They, Dennis has only had one 40-yard pass. You take away that 40-yard pass, that puts them at 60 yards. And there we see the birds enjoying the water and the sunshine here in Washington, D.C. The two teams are back on the field, and we're getting set for the third quarter here. If you coach Kerry Bailey, what did you talk to your team about at halftime? As I said, that Dennis Brown, you take a look at this. Dennis Brown, he's had uh, 10 or 14, 103 yards. He had that one big 40-yard one, but he's also hurt him with his feet. You got to stop that. Whitaker, you see that he had 10 carries. For 10. It's not 2.7 yards. He got 27 yards, but he got 2.7 average. That's not what really matters. It matters that he did some tough running, made some things happen. So what you carry, Barry, you say, Bailey, you say, let's go back to running the ball. Let's get tough. Let's take this third quarter and see can we inch our way back into the game. And there you see Carlos Whitaker on the bike, and there you see Martin December back deep to receive for the Bison, who will get the second-half kickoff from Justin Kostanak. Oh, uh, the Norfolk State Spartans. And one other thing, Ty, play better on special teams, please. We'll see what happens on this kickoff as Castanet makes his approach and kicks it deep, and this will be Drayden at the 10. Up to the 15, Drayden to the 20, 25, and stop at about the 26-yard line before he had a seam, but one of the Norfolk State defenders stepped in there and made the stop. There was number 26, Ricardo Vulcan, who made the stop. And that's what we're saying. Drayden was right there. That's the second time we've seen consecutively that he had an opportunity to make a big run. But the people up front that's blocking is not getting the job done, and they must get the job done. It's always the, really the chemistry and the whole unit working together that makes it happen. Lord Hacker comes back out of quarterback for the Bison, who will look again to establish the running game as he hands it off to Ramon McElrathbe, and McElrathbe will be stopped behind the line of scrimmage as Dennis Marsh, number one, made the stop. You know, do not let a big six foot five, 300 pound defensive tackle come in and really penetrate the backfield before your running back and get the ball. And essentially that's what they did. This young man came in with 35 tackles. You know he can make plays. You're running at him. You got to get him off that line of scrimmage. You have to make it happen. But it has to happen by controlling the line of scrimmage. Second down and 11 after McElrathbe was dropped for a loss of one. So the Bison will be back at their 25-yard line. Norfolk State with a four-man front this time. Howard with Whitaker back in the eye. Now play action fake. Hagler has a man out there, and ball is nearly picked off. Nearly picked off by Josh Anderson, a strong safety who read that play all the way. 
He read that play and he read the eyes. We, some kind of way, Hagler has to stop looking at his primary receiver. He needs to look at the center. There you see, he dropped back. Watch his head when he dropped back. Back, he's looking right there. He turns, he's looking at his man. He never looks him off. Until you look him off, it just will look at your eyes, and that happens to any quarterback. He's a young quarterback, and I'm sure he will stop doing this eventually, but this is what he needs to work on this offseason. Third down, 11 for the Bison. Ball at the 25, Hagler back in shotgun formation. Whitaker, the single setback. Twin receivers to the left and right. Hagler looking, looking, blows it out there, has a man open hood, but he cannot make the connection at midfield. Now that's the first time, the second time we see him trying to go to hood. He sit back, he did set, but then he overthrew it. He has to really concentrate on those throws. And what we're looking at is they just not really clicking together. And hood was there. So a fourth down in a punting situation for Patrick Wolf and the Bison. And a fourth down to Susan Stark. We told you about those pink flags, and Susan has more on that. Susan. As Ty mentioned earlier today, you can notice that there are pink flags being thrown out instead of those regular yellow penalty flags. That is for the National Breast Cancer Awareness. And this is to remind everyone of the importance of early detection and screening of breast cancer. Hi, Tony, back to you. All right, thank you, Susan. And on that punt, the Spartans will get their first possession here in the second half, and not a great punt because the Spartans will start at first and 10 at their own 46, make it 47-yard line. Gary Bailey, and he's, seen her, he's a little anxious because he knows this is a big series for his defense right here, and they don't need to let him score. Indoor Cooper is back out there. He's a leader. He's a guy that's going to play hurt. And he may make a difference here, but they got a lot of points they need to make up. 28-yard punt, and here's a first down and 10, and a quick pass from Dennis Brown to number 16 out there. Seeing his first action today, that was Daryl Dickerson on the reception. Had to dream Mary was right there. It just was a great throw, and that out throw is a hard one, but at the same time, he threw it where only the wide receiver can get it. Dennis Brown, as we said, not the greatest throw, but he can get that done as well as he can run the ball. Dennis Brown, a dangerous guy because if he, he's not throwing, he's a good runner. Exactly. So the defense has to play honest. Second down and make it seven for Norfolk State. Brown, low snap, gets it, has time, passes again, has his man wide open, but it goes off the hands of the intended receiver, Dario Walker. Alligator arms, feeling the pressure, whatever you want to call it. Dario Walker came in with 8.8 average, so he, he's a pretty good receiver, but at the same time, he felt those footsteps coming down, and when you feel the footsteps coming down of Brandon Buford, you have a tendency, maybe not to catch those. Now, that's like when you shoot your little weak jump shot, and I slap it out of bounds, the next time you try to do a layup. Mm -hmm. Oh, I pass it inside to the big man. He just dunks it. That's what you need to do. <laughs> Third down and five for Norfolk State. Ball at their 48. Brown shotgun formation. Five receivers in this set. Howard showing blitz, and they try to get there, but can't. And here's a pass intended for Walker again, but there was pressure that time by Patrick Jean-Marie, and that's going to be a fourth down and punting situation as a lick was laid on Dennis Brown. Yeah, but that was a timing blitz, and that's why he came so slowly. He had to wait, make it look like. And what you're doing there is really making the quarterback think you're in the coverage. Then you drop back, drop back a couple, and then you take off, and you get that late pressure. Sometimes that's really good. But now I tell you what, you're going to tell me Pete Hadrian, he's not really happy with that series. He wanted something to happen there. So now the Bison, take it, go back where you were before, and make it happen. And here's a punt that... Brandon Drayton will take in at the nine-yard line. Drayton tries to make a man miss, but can't make him miss too much because he's going to be dropped at the 11-yard line after a game of two. No one touched that man. No one was in the way to impede him. He went right down to the receiver and made the hit. You have to block your man on special teams. And that was Marcus Dotson, number 84 for Norfolk State, who made that tackle on Brandon Drayton. First and 10, Bison. Their second possession here in the second half, 13-15 left in the third quarter. They trail Norfolk State 35-6. to six. So here comes Hagler, the quarterback, in shotgun formation. Now they shift the tight ends out wide right. There's a man in motion. That's Drayden. Hagler back to pass. Shovel pass to Drayden, and Drayden's going to be knocked down 
behind the line of scrimmage. Dennis Marsh, the defensive tackle, stayed home that time for Norfolk State and made the tackle. Not only did he stay home, the whole defense stayed home, and that was just discipline by them. They could have very easily flowed to the other side because it was a misdirection play, but the defensive tackle stayed home. A.J. Harris was there, Ray Jennings, and all that defensive line stayed there and made the play cut up a little quicker than they wanted to. Second down and nine for the Bison. There you see Floyd Hagler, who kind of struggled this afternoon, only 43 yards passing in the first half. Shotgun formation, three receivers in this set. Now back to pass, looking, dumps it off to Whitaker, and Whitaker will be dropped at about the 15, maybe the 16-yard line for a gain of one. Well, I don't know if that was a prescribed screen or if that was just a makeup screen. As you look, he sits back. He did look downfield. So, in other words, that was his outlet man again. Very good. One thing we see, maybe it did not pick up as much yards, but the positive thing, he looked to his left, receiver wasn't there, so he threw it to his right, to his outlet. Ball at the 17-yard line, third down and seven for the Bison. This time, Hagler moves under center. Single setback is Carlos Whitaker. Three for defense by Norfolk State Whitaker. Play action fake. Hagler throws it out to Whitaker and cannot make the connection. So three and out for the Bison. You do not like that. You know, right now you can tell that it's real tense for the simple reason. Both coaches know the game, even though with a score it looks as if it's finished. It's still in the balance. All you have to do is make two or three plays, and we've seen that happen before, and the whole momentum can switch. But the third quarter, the beginning of the third quarter, is really when you want to do that. So now 11.51 left in the third, and most coaches say the first five minutes of the third quarter is the most important. So important because no matter if you're leading or if you're behind, you can change the game in those five minutes. Thus far, neither one of the teams have done anything to distinguish themselves as being the better team. Patrick Wilson wants it to Fluka Berry. Fluka Berry trying to get to the outside and can't get there because Jean-Marie and number 35, Martin Porter, make the tackle. And there's a fumble. And, well, he breaks away from the tackle. And this is going to be a Norfolk State touchdown. You cannot believe wow. that you will miss. Dwight Booker Berry. He looked to be down, but instead it's a 50-yard return for a Norfolk State touchdown. And that's just missed tackles, missed assignments, and a super effort by that young man. And I tell you, you can't allow that. We you thought see, the play was over. Oh, yeah. And maybe they did too. But you can't assume it's over until you hear the whistle. This young man kept running, kept playing, and the other team stopped playing. That's the difference difference in this game that's why it's 41 to 6. Take a look at this extra point 41 to 6 and most of it is extra effort. Well you got to see this again because that young man number 33 Dwight Flickerberry who in the first half had an 84 yard kickoff return for a touchdown has done it once again on the 50 yard punt return but it looked like he was down on the right sideline somebody stopped playing but he never did. Now you got a 42 to 6 score you take a look at it three of the, the scores have been set up on special teams, two punts and a kickoff return, and then one on the interception. So you got 28 points right there you've given away. And we're going to take a timeout right now with a score. Norfolk State 41, power six, back in moments. We move further ahead in the game. We have a brand new score here at Green Stadium in Washington, D.C. There you see it, 42 to 12. The Bison have just scored to cut the deficit down to 30 on Norfolk State. Tony, have you been a part of a huge comeback in the second half? Yes, I have. One for, one against. And I remember we played Houston one time. We went in at halftime. We had them down 26-7, to seven, and we end up losing that game. I think it was 29-30 uh, or 30 or something like that. The Dallas Cowboys did it like that one time. Nothing's impossible, but really right now what you want to do at this stage of the season, you want to see what players are going to stand up and continue to play. You want to try to improve on the things that hurt you. As I say, you take away those special teams plays and that turnovers, and this is a tight game right now. So the Bison will kick it off. And third quarter score, I'm going to pass on to you real quick. South Carolina State leading Delaware State 23-3. The Bulldogs undefeated in mid East Athletic Conference play. As there's an onside kick by Patrick Wolf, and he recovered it. Let's see if it went the required 10 yards, and the referee said it did. Yes, it did, and we've seen them 
operate and do this before, and that's a very good play at this point in time. That tells me right there that Coach Bailey is not going to allow this team to quit. Nice little kick here, just hit it. All the people have dropped back from North Carolina State. They run 10 yards, blockers there. He stops and pick it up. Excellent play. The third time this year that the Bison have executed and recovered an onside kick. Now let's add and delete. They've had four special team miscues. Now we give them one on the good ledger. Okay, so they have had three. So we'll take one away. No, we want three more good plays is what I'm saying. All right, let's <laughs> see if they go back up top again. Here's Hagler. The last pass he threw was a 48-yard touchdown to Brandon Sherman. Now he's back again to pass. Looking deep again. Has Hood out there. Hood makes the reception down to the 10 and knocked out of bounds at the Norfolk State six-yard line. I tell you, it was excellent. You know what? I like that, the way they put him. Hagler back in there, giving him the protection, let him step. And I keep telling you, let him go back to seven, step up to five. He's a whole different quarterback. He stood in there, and he's had two excellent throws. Plus, they found a pigeon. He step up. You see him step up, too. Nice throw. Hood is out there. Great catch. And they got a pigeon over there in 27. I don't know his name. I should not call him that. But at the same time, they go at him twice. Nice throw. And what they're doing is stopping and going on him. He's biting. He can't cover these guys. So you know what? You ride that horse until it can't run anymore. Don Carey, the uh, defender for the Spartans, says that was a 49-yard reception from Florida Hagler to Orlando Hood. First down and goal to make it first and 10 for the Bison at the 11-yard line. They spot it. And now there's a timeout being called, and that might be a timeout that they want later on because Howard had to call that timeout. I do not like that. Maybe the clock was running down or whatever, but you know what? You're trying to mount a comeback. In the fourth quarter, you need every timeout you can get. We've seen games that they've lost this year because they did not have those timeouts. So, therefore, this is important. But at the same time as being the leader, Hagler probably figured we need this six. Notice I said six. I'm not saying seven. We need this six right now to get back in the game. Now, the Spartans have been, you know, susceptible to the big play all season. Now, the Bison, they're going after the top corners on, on each play, and that's Don Carey. He's the top corner in the MEAC. Yeah, he's, you said the, he was top a pigeon, he's well, the top corner. Well, you know corner. what? I saw them work him twice. I've seen him. He came in with 26 tackles, five pass breakups, which is not a lot. So, yes, I, I'm not calling him a pigeon for life. He's just a pigeon for those plays. And you know what? They found something. All right, quickly before we resume play, let's go down to Susan Stark on the sideline. Susan. Hi, we have Camille and Henry from America's Promise. Can you tell us a little bit more about your organization and what's the focus? Okay, well, America's Promise is a Saturday morning mentoring program. It's not so much academic tutoring as it is like big brother, big sister. So it's one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and we focus on making a more personal, positive impact in the community, not just like feeding the homeless once a month, but it's every Saturday, and it goes um, all year long. And like I said, it's one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So we do different things like feeding the homeless, doing academic games on Howard's campus, um, playing. Why are organizations like this so important? Well, they're important to me because I feel the reason why I'm so blessed is because the, <laughs> the, reason, the purpose is to reach back to your community. The reason why we're all at Howard, I feel, is to give back to our community, which right. is exactly why. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry, back to you guys, Tony and Ty. Well, thank you, Susan, and no thank you, say the Howard Bison, who are turned away on the play that developed during the interview. You saw where Terrell Whitehead picked off that fade pass from Floyd Hagler. There's Whitehead right there, and Howard in, in the bottom three in red zone conversion in the MEAC, and that was another indication that they don't do well from the 20 yard line on in. Inexcusable. You can't allow to get down there, and every time it seems though they get momentum, they do something to stop it. And the Angelo Branch on the carry that time, and he gets outside to about the 16 yard line. I think the more so than that interception, Tony, the big momentum breaker was the timeout. Yeah, they just I, hit that big 49-yard play, and that was a timeout. And, you know, we've, Indoor Cooper is one good thing that we need to make, make mention. He's been in the last two series. I saw him go in, and that's, that's important for this defense. But at the same time, as you said, that timeout, that just messed up their whole flow, took away, and then they make a mistake. First and five for Norfolk State, and they run the ball again. Of a left tackle and, and not to harp on that but you know you had momentum flowing there a, a big passing catch from hood 
from, from uh, Hagler to Hood, and you go down and you line up and you let the play clock run down, you force the call a timeout. Oh, yeah. And you know, let's not be just one sided on this. Norfolk is taking advantage of every opportunity they've been given by the fight. So, what we have to look at is they're giving them the opportunity. And in dissecting this game, we also must be cognizant of the fact that they are giving them these opportunities. They are making mistakes. They are calling wrong timeouts. The special team is playing bad. Had they scored then, this would be a ball game. Instead, it's a third down and three for Norfolk State, and they pick it up as Dennis Brown is his wide receiver out there. And he takes it for a first down. That is Jamar Johnson on the reception. And see, that's what happens when you have a quarterback that can run and they're very mobile. He can make plays happen and make get a release from a receiver that was formerly covered. But by him being able to run, you must pay attention to him. So now first down and 10, the Spartans have the ball up to the 25-yard line. We have 5-16 left in the third quarter. Howard trails Norfolk State 40 to the 30. Bison need a big play on defense. Norfolk State comes out. Five receivers in the set. Man goes in motion. Inside handoff. And he takes it and cuts it back. And on that reception was number six, P.J. Hayden, the wide receiver from Fredericksburg, Virginia. And one thing you're saying is very, very true. They need a play. They need to make a play. They need to stop this momentum. They need to get a turnover. And sometimes you depend on your defense to do that. And that's what they need right now. Even though the defense have played fairly well, they haven't gotten a turnover. Look at the other side of the ledger. Norfolk has gotten turnovers and turned them into taking away points and giving their offense points. Second down and two for the Spartans. Ball spotted at their own 33. Brown, the quarterback, is shotgun formation. Howard with a 4-3 defense showing blitz. Here's the snap. Inside handoff to Branch. Branch trying to get to the outside. Gets to the corner. And gets close to a first down over to about the 36-yard line. Indoor Cooper played that very well. But you can see he had to hurt shoulder. And what happened was he shot the gap and made a nice play. Made the man miss. And then he went over and he tried to reach for him. But he could only get his arm out so far. Is that because of the stinger? Yes. Now, you can watch him as he gets through here. Nice move. And he see he didn't okay. bring that left that left arm up to the last moment because, you know, that's the hurt arm. Normally on that play, he would have cupped that guy in the backfield. First down, 10 Spartans. Ball at the 35. Norfolk State taking his time. Working that play clock down. 10 seconds on the play clock. Now, now a handoff. Inside handoff to Hedgeman. And... The King takes it over the 35 to about the 38. And let's again go down to Susan Stark on the sideline and tell us more about why indoors is back in the game. Susan. Howard can use all the help they can get, and senior defensive player number 45, Endor Cooper, is back in the field after being sidelined for a left shoulder stinger. It's important for him to play since NFL scouts from Minnesota Vikings, Tennessee Titans, and Atlanta Falcons are in the stands. Tony Ty, back to you. Okay. Good reason to be out there on the field, Tony? Yeah, and you know, and, and one thing we got to always be aware of, he's a leader, he's a player, and he's a guy that bleeds to, for this team, and he's bled all year, and he's been a very good player. So you do not, if he can get out there, and no matter how effective his arm could be, he will be out there making plays because that's the pedigree that he is. And you have to show the scouts, too, that you can play with a little pain or some pain. Exactly. You have to do that. And I did not want to make mention of that because that will help him in the long run because that's what you want to see. When you're on the next level, it doesn't matter. You look at it with 52 tackles and everything. He is a great player now, but they want to see what can you do on the next level. Will you play hurt? Can you cover running backs? Okay, you got a penalty right there. Can, will you go in when it's not going well for your team? Well, the penalty will push the Spartans back and make a third down and 11 if it is on Norfolk State. Yes, it's, it is. It, it, the guy jumped well before it was time for him to move. 2.33 left here in the third quarter. Norfolk State leading 42 to 12, trying to break a five game losing streak. They have not beaten Howard here at Green Stadium since 1983. You know what's disturbing about this, though? You look at this, and I hate to keep harping on the mistakes, but take those out. This is a very good game, and well, we still have a quarter left, so they still haven't beat them there in a while. Third down, 11 for the Spartans, back at the 35. Brown, quick step, quick pass to Dario Walker. Walker running room midfield and tripped up at the 45 yard line. Walker got inside that Howard defense and was on his way to the end zone, but got tripped up at the 45. 
and there's an injured player, an injured bison on the field down there. You take a look at it. He's got a nice little throw. Throw it to the middle. Get to the middle of the field. No one there to really get him. Number 43 comes up at the last moment, but he picked up. And that's Robert Parker. Haven't called his name. Uh, the junior from Tampa, Florida. Haven't called his name, but he made a play downfield. And he, he's a pretty good player. But at the same time, that was just a very good play. And what it was was a middle screen. And they let the lineman get out there. And he come behind him, throw it to him. And he already has blocks. And with an injury on the field, we'll take a timeout. The score, 42-12, Norfolk State leads. Howard back in moments on HBCU Sports. And we're late here in the third quarter at Green Stadium in Washington, D.C., where the Howard Bison trail Norfolk State 42-12. Robert Parker, the injured Bison, got up under his own power. Is off on the field, being looked at on the sideline by the training staff of the Bison, and we do expect to see him back in the game possibly. Well, he caught the gentleman from behind, and he fell down, and his shoulder kind of made an impact into the grass. And I tell you, that's why they're rubbing that shoulder right now. You get your shoulders jammed like that. Football is a very violent game, uh, and it's the kind of game you can get hurt on any given play. What I have seen, and, you know, that tells you one thing, just like we said with Indoor Cooper coming back in, this young man will be back too because he's a player. And he, he's not having the greatest year that he's had, but as you can see, that shoulder right there, that's what's bothering him. When he came down, that shoulder was jammed into the turf. And when you jam it like that, you have a great injury, a great opportunity to have a rotator cuff injury. I know I wouldn't be back. Third down, <laughs> make it first and ten for – Norfolk State, here's a swing pass out there to the wide receiver who catches it and gets down to the 40-yard line. That's number 16, Daryl Dickerson on the return. One, the thing, rather. one thing Howard has identified, if you get pressure on Dennis Brown, he will throw it. Now, the last couple of plays, they've gotten pressure. The receivers have made good catches. But at the same time, continue to do what you're doing because he, he will throw a couple to you. So, nice pickup. Uh, first down brings up a second down, a long six for the Spartans with 149 left in the third quarter. Long third quarter because we've seen a lot of passing. Yeah. Dennis Brown in shotgun formation. Four receivers for the Spartans. Quick pass out there again. Same play. Jamar Johnson gets a first down for the Spartans. But see, now that is the problem. And if you take a look at it, that is the problem. When you blitz, Wherever a good any good quarterback wherever you blitz and the player leaves that area They will throw it where that player left We'll see what happened indoor left that area. So what they do they threw it to a right a receiver right where he came So first and ten for Norfolk State ball down to the Howard 30-yard line and Brown again is shotgun formation. They've stuck with this all afternoon inside handoff to the Angelo branch and branch breaks containment Branch down inside the 15 to about the 11 yard line. Gain of 19 for D'Angelo Branch. Now I can accept something, but now you don't do this. This is just a flat out run, man on man. All of the bison get turned inside and the, the cornerback gets cut down. He makes a nice cut and he picks up 10 yards like it's nothing. What you have to do there, those defense linemen, they got to use their hands. You got to get somebody outside. Every time they get a big run today, containment comes into play. First down and 10, and here's Branch again. Runs it up inside. He's going to be tackled after a gain of about one. <laughs> and I guess you can say right now, Norfolk State is enforcing its will on the Howard Bison defense. Yes, they are, because they can see that had they got that last score and it was 42 to 18 to 19, that this would have been a different game. Right now, what they're trying to do is try to erase any thoughts that they think Howard may have a win in this game and they think they can do that by scoring. Total passing yards this afternoon, Norfolk State 150. Howard has 80. But right now the Spartans are doing it on the ground. Here's another run by Branch. Branch just breaking tackles just down to about the five-yard line. You got to take that on at the point of attack a little more. Howard was right there. They had a defensive back right there, but he also did not close the hole enough. You got to close the hole down. You got to contain. You got to play the rudiments of the defense. Pick up a five for Norfolk State, and we will take it to the other end because the third quarter has expired. So with the score, 
Norfolk State 42, Howard 12. We'll return after this timeout on HBCU Sports. We're back here at Howard University for the start of the fourth quarter with the Bison trailing in Norfolk State, 42 to 12. Ty Miller and Tony McGee here on HBCU Sports. This drive is into its seventh minute. Norfolk State has, has had the ball for 12 plays. When play resumes, they'll be in their 13th play of this drive, Tony. So they are enforcing their will. Enforcing their will, but the most important thing is how did the drive start? With a turnover. A turnover that was going in to really put this game closer and allow them now to keep the ball this amount of time. So here come the Spartans with a third down and four as you look at the rushing and passing yards for this afternoon. We'll get back to that in a second. But here's a score or a run to the end zone, and that is D'Angelo Branch just really just forcing his will over the goal line and into the end zone to make it a 48 to 12 score for Norfolk State on top. And it's unfortunate. People will look at this score and say, oh, they just really ran over Howard. But if you just go back and think about the thing that had transpired in this game, now Howard seems to have given up somewhat. Maybe not, but you don't you do not allow him. You gotta play each and every play to the end. Pass it out on the PAT, puts it up and puts it through the uprights. So early here in the fourth quarter, you see it there. It's now a 49 to 12 ball game. Norfolk State on top of Howard. Well, this is evaluation time for the coaches, for the head coach, and everyone. They need to sit back. And this is when you start evaluating. As you look at this, this is man on man, straight blocking. Give it to him in the four hole, which is between the guard and, and, and the center. And you have no one there, not a linebacker, not a defensive tackle, or nothing. And we'll take a break and come back with more this time out on HBC Sports. Never fled from Spalding, true to the game. Fourth quarter action here in Washington, D.C., where the Norfolk State Spartans jubilant, happy on the sideline right now because they lead it 49 to 12. The Angelo Branch just took it eight four yards out for the score for the Spartans. There you see the Norfolk State marching van whooping it up here as he now gets set to kick out to the Bison. Tony, as we go into the final 14 minutes and 57 seconds of this game, if you coach Kerry bailing your team down by a huge margin, what is your focus and what do you do offensively? Well, offensively, I go back to what I can do, which we know they will pass the ball now. But my other focus is on to see the reaction of my players, and as I said prior to the break, evaluate these players, see who's giving up, see who's going to continue to play, see who's just out there just putting time in and who's really trying to still do something about the score of this game. And for the Spartans and Coach Pete Adrian, he wants to see his players continue to pour it on, right? As he want to he want to pour it on, but he doesn't want them to make enough mistakes to let Howard even think they're back in the game. As you'll notice at the end of the second quarter, beginning of the third, he was a little nervous, but they made a couple of plays to make it happen. Fair catch by the Bison, who will take it over first and ten of their own 33-yard line. A fair catch by... Carnegie Toronto, a tight end and a freshman from Largo, Maryland. He's caught the last three, so they're kicking it to him. At least he's making the catch, so that's a positive thing. But what they're doing is keeping it out of the hands of the returner, of the returner because they feel like P.J. Hayden to make quick sixes, they call it, will make it happen. So the Bison take over first and 10 at their own 33. Hagler back to pass. Hagler pressured and dropped. Behind the line of scrimmage, big number 95 breaking through for the Spartans that time. And that was Ray Jennings, a six foot, 305 pound junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. And if you look at that, Hagler was still looking over the defense when the ball was snapped to him. He did an excellent, see that he did an excellent job just to catch the ball. I don't know what the center was going on. He was on his own snap. He snapped it, but Hagler was still looking at over the defense. And Sean Wolford, the center, has not had the best of games this afternoon. I did not want to say that, you I, know, I, because I I'm, not one, going, but I'm not one to point fingers, but I will get you to do that, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 16, and we have a timeout on the field called by Norfolk State. And there's Coach Kerry Bailey looking like, what's going on here? Why are they calling timeout? And Coach Kerry Bailey has 
he has some work to do with this Howard team. There are some talented players here at Howard. Yeah, and you know, I, 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 it would be interesting to me to find out because from last year when he first came to now, I've seen a kind of a change in his to what I see him doing, and I would wonder if that's because he does not have the complement of players that he needs to accomplish what he wants to. If you remember last year when he came in, he was running. I mean, if you think Whitaker had a great year and right. they had some tough running backs, quarterback was the kind that he made plays when things happened. The defense was anchored and they was coming and blitzing. This year I noticed a kind of, I don't know if he, uh, these players have given him enough trust offensively and defensively to do that other than indoor Cooper. It's, it's a team that's not on the attack always seem to be on the defensive. Exactly, and I don't think that's because of coaching either. I think that's the players. Second down and 16, Hagler being chased. He's on the defensive and will throw it out of bounds as he was being chased by Deion Norris, a 6'4 junior, and a nose tackle for, a defensive tackle rather, for the Spartans. And we say he's active, but they're not, you know, you look at what these guys came in and, and Dennis Marsh, as you see, that's pressure right there. Who was blocking him? Hagler, you can't blame that on him. He's doing all he could. But Dennis Marsh was the only defense lineman that came in with some kind of stat. He had 35 tackles and really two or three for losses. Then G Jennings only had 10 solos and 12 assists. And Harris only had 16 tackles. Now they come in here and look like Dexter Manley and Charles Mann. Third down, 16 for uh, Howard. Hagler back to pass. Throws it out there. The ball is caught for a first down. As making a nice adjustment with Daley Gunter, number 80. Very nice play by the young man, and that was the same kind of route that Norfolk has been really trying. And what you do is you get out there, hey, it lifts him off. He throw it where he throw it where only the offensive man can adjust his body and catch the ball towards the sideline. Great play. And for all of you fans, in the, I forgot how old I am. Dexter Man and Charles Mann are a little older Redskins. But that was just a great play by that young man. And the thing about it, Hagler threw it where only he could get it. 18-yard pass and catch, first down for the Bison at the 45. Hager in the middle, has it picked off. Picked off by number 34, who has one reception for a touchdown. That is Corwin Hammond, his second interception this afternoon. Okay, let's take a look at it. Number 34, what is he reading? Why is he getting a jump on the ball? Why does it look like we got a completion for the Bison and he gets an interception? What do you think it is, Ty, when we see the ring? Look at his eyes. Nowhere. He looked off very little, threw it right there. He looked at him in the beginning. 34 is just reading his eyes. And we mentioned earlier that the referees are using pink flags for breast cancer awareness, mm -hmm. normally yellow flags. Well, now the bison might want to throw the white flags. I'm not going there, Ty. That, that, that was very brutal, young man. Uh, just an assessment. When you were out there at the hot spa in, in Miami, did you think of that? Uh, you know why we were here working like dogs is it you thought of that white flag thing <laughs> well first down and 10 for norfolk state just poking a little fun here. i mean trying to keep it you know well with, here. I mean, you, you are but you know what coach bailey's not because he's looking at that 13 25 and i tell you it's evaluation time now but that quarter that what Hagler needs to do and someone needs to sit him down and look at this film and then go back over his film of game in and game out and say, what are you doing, young man, that you see? And I can pick up to it. On your three-step drops, you're throwing it in the ground and you're throwing it high. On your other drops, on your seven drops, and you come up five, you're doing a good job. But on all of them, you're eyeballing your man, and you must stop doing that. Dexter Merritt in a quarterback for Norfolk State now. Merritt hands off to his running back. And Merritt spelling Dennis Brown, who had a decent day. Merritt is a 6'2 redshirt freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia. And see what you're starting to do now. Howard is getting up slow. Norfolk, no, we, we forced our will. We're running the ball. We got things happening. More and more of them are becoming injured. You got people in there now that haven't played in a while. Indoor tried to come back in, but you know that he, he can only do so much with a hurt shoulder. That defensive lineman have taken a big hit. But you know, one person that we haven't mentioned, and that's Will Corner. He is really by on the roster, he's a fullback, 6'2", 245. But I've seen him go in there, and he plays that defensive end pretty well to be a really fullback. And he's in there right now on the defensive line. Third down and three, low snap. Brandon Cameron on the carry for Norfolk State, trying to get to the outside, but he won't get there as Howard's defense will knock him down. 
short of the first down marker and for a two-yard loss. And I like to see that because you know what? They haven't given up totally. And the defense, as we say, they'll look at the score and feel like the defense has been scored on quite a bit. But no, it hasn't. It's been turnover. It's been special teams play. Saki Kirkula made the tackle for the vice in that time. And now fourth down and three for Norfolk State. And they're at the point of the field where I guess there's no sense in punting. So, Coach... Adrian Scott will move to the sideline and talk to him about what they want to do in this fourth down. Mm -hmm. Even though with the lead being what it is, why not punt the ball? Well, they feel like if they punt it, and, and you look where the ball is located now, and if they punt it uh, and the ball goes out of bounds, then they'll have it back on the 20, so you really only gain about 18 yards. So they take the penalty, yes. let the clock run down for a delay of game to put it back five yards, then right. punt the ball. And, and Tony, at the top of the show, I told you it was a Norfolk State team that came in two and six. But Coach Adrian told me during the week that Coach Taylor, when he lost to the Florida A&M last week, 31-28, after the game, Coach Taylor told him, I know your team could easily be six and two. Mm. And, I mean, it's just not a it's, a, it's a decent, improving Norfolk State team. I, I agree with you to a point, but also I had to look at the digression of the Howard team and see where they made their mistake and why they gave away a lot of points. And then I, then when I look at that, I say, no, this team needs to be what they were, two, uh, two and six. <laughs> Billy Rudd punts it down inside the 10-yard uh, line. Norfolk State will make it just outside the 10 at the 11-yard line. And Howard has regressed over the past couple of weeks somewhat, and, and now injuries will cause them to digress even more. Yeah, and see, even more. yeah regressing a little bit, and that, you never know what that – may be due to the regression, may be due to injuries. It may be due to the play calling, and that may be as a result of the injuries. So uh, you have to sit down and look at the whole season, and then you can kind of figure out what happened. First and 10, Hagler still at quarterback, sends a man in motion, takes a snap, throws it out there, has a man open, and that's going to be Hood up to about the 22. And right now, let's go down to Susan on the sideline. Susan Stark, what do you have for us? We have Terry White from Tau Beta Sigma. Can you let us know a little bit about your sorority and what makes today special for you guys? Well, Tau Beta Sigma is a national honorary band sorority. We basically provide support and service to collegiate band programs. And today is special for us because we're celebrating our 25th anniversary this year and we're having our Sisters Day at the game. How are you guys nationally recognized? I heard some good news. <laughs> well, our chapter, Ada Delta at Howard, is very well nationally recognized. We've won top chapter several times. We've won a lot of awards, and we've contributed to the national sorority regalia. So we're a really highly praised and prized chapter. That's really nice. Tony Ty, back to you guys. Okay, Susan. And back on the field, it's a second down and four for the Bison. Ball spotted up at the 31-yard line. Ten minutes, 11 seconds left in this game. They trail Norfolk State. 49 to 12. Hagler back to pass. Sets up. Has a man out there. And it is Gunter. Daily Gunter for a first down up to the 43. Like that play. Like the way he stood up. Brought the receiver inside. And the offensive line did a pretty good job holding him off. Hagler gave him a chance to look down there and give the, the receiver opportunity to get down for a 10-yard gain. Pick up the first down. 9.52, 9.51 left in the fourth quarter. You may not can win the game, but you can make a little noise. And it's going to be a short week for these Bison right now who are on the way to another loss. They will head down to Orangeburg to take on South Carolina State. Mm, that's, that will be a very tough game. Flag out there, so you know it's offensively because they did not allow them. It's an offensive penalty because they did not allow them to continue to play. And South Carolina State, at last check, was leading. That ball, part of snap. The illegal snap, number 77, offense. Five yards, remain second down. They were leading Delaware State 23-3. to That game was in the third quarter. Norfolk State will take on Morgan State next week, and that game could mean a whole lot because coming into this afternoon's action, Morgan State was only one down or one down in the loss column in the MEAC race. They're taking on Florida A&M at 6 p.m. down in Tallahassee this evening. Mm. Back here, first down 15 for the Bison. 9.20 left in this game. And again, a stoppage in play. Referee's getting a kind of whistle happy here late, Tony, in the game. Mm, yes, I, I don't know what that one was about. The last one, as we said, was against the Bison. 
but I think maybe they were adjusting the clock. Hood in motion, turned up field, but no flag. Hager, all kinds of time. Hood's out there, picked off, but broken up by two Norfolk State defenders as Terrell Whitehead had a bead on the ball for the interception, but his teammate unfortunately banged into him, Ricardo Volchin, and knocked it incomplete. And the only problem right there, Hood was running wide open once again, and I just don't see what's happening here. But more and more, I am really really just looking at how they're beating this offense and that's by reading the quarterback's eyes how does a quarterback overcome what you've been talking about all afternoon and repetition. learn to look off his repetition defenders? repetition this is his first full year playing and you expect that now i can see this on all levels not just uh, not just uh pros but you i mean uh, college you also see it in the pros and that's what they talk about in the pros, when you see the game, they say he need to look off the safety. Norfolk State calls a timeout, so with 8.55 left, 49-12, the Spartans over the Bison. We'll take a timeout and come back with more on HBCU Sports. And we're back here in Washington, D.C. on this Saturday afternoon, the first day of November. Norfolk State, 49, Howard, 12. An update from Dover, Delaware, where they are late in the fourth quarter with two minutes and 15 seconds left. South Carolina State hanging on over the Hornets. They lead 23-17 again, about two minutes and 15 seconds left in that game. Oh, well, that's that's a big one. I mean, just a six-point spread right there. Anything can happen with two minutes left. And we know Delaware has had the propensity in the last few years to make big plays right at the end. So and there, now, there's our scholastic player of the game, Don Carey. Yes, I tell you, he's made plays. And our next class player from Howard University, that's Patrick Wolf, the punter today. GPA 3.8. Uh, he majors in international business, young man from Germany, only a sophomore. And handling all kicking chores because of injuries on this Howard team. And injuries seem to snowball when it, once they get control of a team. And that's what's happened to the Bison. Well, as I said, sometimes the individuals that are coming in to replace the injured players aren't prepared to really do the job, and I think that's what has transpired on this team. I think the people that's come in to replace injured players haven't been as good or as well prepared as the players that were hurt. 8.55 left here in the fourth quarter. Second down and 15 for Howard. Hagler back in shotgun formation. Howard with five receivers in the set. Hagler looking, looking, throws it out to Hood. One-handed catch, but cannot bring it down. Good effort by Orlando's Hood. Ball just a little bit behind him. And a little bit hard and high. I guess they call that high outside, right? High hard one, right? That's what I'm talking about. And that's what he threw it. He threw it kind of hard. You see, Hood tried to bring it down. Even, even if he had brought it down, you're only looking at a two-yard game there. Or a fumble. I think Hood would have held on to it. So third down and 15 now. And a hacker again in shotgun formation. Norfolk State just laying back on defense. Playing man-to-man -man defense right now. Hagler chased out of the pocket. Has running room, but throws it out there and hits his man, Gunter. A check that make that number 85 on the reception for the Bison. Kenneth Johnson. I'm sorry, Todd Hughes is on the reception mm -hmm. as he was chased out. 10 yard pickup, but another punting situation for Patrick Wolf and the Bison. Patrick Wolf has gotten a lot of work on this punting today, but I tell you what, overall, I think he's done a very good job. Look at this nice little play. He probably could have picked up yards he ran it, but he got it out there to Hughes. Hughes made a nice little catch, but at the same time, it was not enough for the first down. Matter of fact, it came up about six yards short. Dwight Flukeberry back as he fumbles the snap, and he's going to be chasing, kicks it sideways. And that sideways soccer style kicking helped him that time because normally a kicker would not, a punter would not get that kick off. Oh, I tell you, and that was very, I'm going to tell you what, I, people may not realize that was a very good play by that young man because even though he did fumble the, the uh, snap, he was able to make a play. I mean, had he not made that play, then Norfolk would have taken the ball over down deep into Bison Camp. Kick it like a soccer player that time. Exactly. So Norfolk State takes over. New quarterback in the game for Pete Adrian's team, who are going to move to the three and six on the season. Dexter Merritt, a freshman from Chesapeake's in the game, spelling Dennis Brown. 
Maris shotgun formation. And inside handoff. And the running back is number 37 in the game now. That's Brandon Cameron. Cameron takes it over left tackle for a few yards. Yeah, all they're doing is running that same play, and what they're doing is trying to run outside, get on the edges, and they're doing that because they're able to block Howard's defensive linemen down, linebackers out, and letting that running back make a cut. They've been running that all day, and that play is just, is scheme where it will go between right outside of the tight end and before the safety of linebacker can get up. It's a very easy play, but at the same time, Howard. They really have a defense that play well today. Cameron picked up six, so second down and four for Norfolk State, who take their time as the play clock runs down inside of 10 seconds. Merritt again in shotgun formation. Inside handoff again, and it's going to be Cameron. Cameron stacked up at the line of scrimmage, but surges forward and picks up one, maybe two. It's going to be third down and short. Mm -hmm. So at this point in the game, Norfolk State content to sit on the ball offensively and just play zone defense as you see Indoor Cooper back in the game for the Bison. Yeah, yeah, you gotta put your hat off, take your hats off to the young man. He could have easily take a taken a rain check for next week or the next three days or whatever, but he came out here. He's still trying to play. Yes, he know that it's scouts you're looking, but that's not the reason that he did that. He's a player. Third down and a short two for Norfolk State. Merritt, the quarterback again, a shotgun formation. Takes the handoff. Quick pass out there. And he hits his man for a first down. Donald Alexander, the tight end, 6'6 six, six from Lynchburg, made the reception. Well, I'm sorry you do not have instant replay on this because they're calling this. A, the ball was out and they're calling it a complete pass. But at the same time, I do not think the runner was down for the simple reason. Indoor was under him before the ball the ball came out prior to that. But now they're saying the ball was down. Therefore, Howard would not get the ball. And they're saying it was a completed pass. So the Spartans keep the clock moving with six minutes and seven seconds left here. And there's a young man who made the reception down on the field. That is, uh, again, Donald Alexander. And we'll take a timeout with the score. Norfolk State 49, Howard 12. We'll be back in moments here on HBCU Sports. Visit drugfree.org. And we're back here at... Howard University, where you see the young man, Donald Alexander, has been helped off the field. He made one reception. Good for a first down for the Spartans, but he's being checked out by the medical staff. There you see Indoor Cooper, who made the tackle. And as you can see, right there, he comes down. The young man is not all the way down before the ball comes out, but the official said he was. So therefore, he not only gets the reception, they keep the ball. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Spartans at their own 36. Six minutes and seven seconds left in this ball game. Norfolk State next week again takes on Morgan State as head coach Pete Adrian, who asked him earlier this week, I said, uh, this five-game losing streak, is it an indication that Norfolk State is back to the team they were a few years ago, or is it just something, is an aberration? He said it was an aberration because of big plays, because of young players, but he still feels he has this, this program at a high level. And yes, he's played better today, and at the same time, though, I can conceivably see how they would lose five in a row because they really, just man on man, haven't really out just played out played Howard that well. Dexter Merritt hands it off to the running back, and that's Hedgeman on the carry, and Hedgeman gets uh, over the line of scrimmage for about one. Actually, no gain on that carry, and that was number two, Andre Cook, his first carry this afternoon a senior from Chesapeake, Virginia. But if you look at it now, and then you look at it man on man, but then you look on unit on unit, their offense and defensive line of Norfolk has played pretty well today. They've controlled the line of scrimmage. Running backs have played, have ran well. Quarterback have controlled the game. So therefore, overall, as units, they have outplayed Howard that way. But Howard also have turned over the ball, and special teams have been outplayed badly. Second down and 10 for the Spartans. Taking their time, play clock inside of five. They snap it at three. Here's Cook again. Cook gets to a first down, gain of 12. That's what we're referring to, unit on unit. That, now, that was a great individual run, but it all started with that offensive line controlling the line of scrimmage. And those young men have played well for Norfolk. 
And to me, each and every game is won between the line of scrimmage. You win a game either two yards on, on their side or two yards on your side. Whichever you, if you get on their side and penetrate, you can win it defensively. If they get on your side offensively, they win it. Gain of 11 for a first down and 10 for Norfolk State. Ball spotted at the 47-yard line. Clock continues to tick at 427 and counting. Merritt again taking the clock down inside five seconds on the play clock. And the handoff to a new running back in the game. This is number 41 as they keep shoveling running backs in and out. That's Donovan Cotton, a sophomore from Hampton, Virginia. A lot of Virginia players, homegrown talent on this Norfolk State roster. And that has to bode well for Norfolk State because that means they're working at Tidewater, Hampton Roads area real well in terms of recruiting. As we know, there's a lot of talent down there, a lot of talent that goes to other places in the country. But at the same time, when you as a as, as a school can go within your state and pick up a lot of great players. Say, for instance, Florida does that very well as well as Texas. You then have a breeding ground for great athletes and great players, and you keep them at home. That is the key. You got to keep your good players at home, and Norfolk has done a very good job with that. Second down and eight. Merritt again snaps it. Cotton on the run. Cotton gets to the, to the corners. Breaks containment, still running and still turning. And you can tell this is a hungry young ball player. Yeah, he wants that time. He wants his opportunity. He wants his name in the record book. <laughs> but as you see, you said broke <laughs> containment. They didn't really break containment. Once again, the defensive lineman did a good job at point of attack. And then you either, when you get a good standoff and you two gap on the guy, when I say two gap, you're right on him where you go either way. You got to make his election. He went inside of the man instead of out. And Tony, while we have this time, too, two days away, two and a half days away, Election Day. Got to remind everybody to get out and vote. Uh, this is one of the most important elections of our lifetime. And understandably, the lines in pre-election voting have been long. They're going to be long on Tuesday. Be patient, cast your ballot, and may the best or the, or the candidate with the most votes win. Exactly. And, you know, you, don't, you do not worry about the lines when you've got such a situation we have. You go and stand in line for concerts. You go and stand in line for rides at the carnival. You go and stand in line for, for sales at a store. So, therefore, to vote and have your vote being counted, it doesn't matter how long the line is. You just make sure that you do it. And that, again, it happens on Election Day, which is Tuesday. And that is going to be, what, November the 4th? Yes. I voted six weeks ago. Did you? Yes, I you did. You stand in line? You no. no. No, just impatient, right? No, I wanted my voice to be heard. <laughs> Second down and nine, two minutes and five seconds here. The Bison again will take on South Carolina State. It's going to be a short week for Coach Kerry Bailey and his staff. Norfolk State working that play clock down, and again, they hand it off to the running back, and he gets one yard, and... One minute and 47 seconds on the clock now. Break up a third down and eight. Well, I was looking at 71 when he was going after one of Howard defensive players. When we were players at this time of the game, we say the most dangerous player on the field is one with a clean jersey. <laughs> he haven't been out there all day. He's trying to make a name, and you bet not turn your head on him. One minute and 25 seconds left here. As, as a head coach, what, what do you say when you go into the locker room after taking such a loss? I'm disgusted. I'm looking at you make the same problems in the same plays that you made prior, the same mistakes. My special teams are horrible, and they've been that way, and they need to work to get better. And I'm not saying that they're horrible from a coaching point as much as from an effort point. And you can't allow your special team to dictate a game, and that's transpired over the first last four or five years. And I'm telling my players I'm disgusted that really, if you take away our mistakes, we played with this team. Andre Cook on the carry, number two for Norfolk State. Picked up nine yards, and Randall Jamison made the stop for the Bison. So now fourth down and one with 38 seconds left. And Howard will drop to one and seven on the season. Norfolk State improves to three and six. For Norfolk State, again, we mentioned during the course of the telecast that they haven't won a game here since 1983. Well, that streak is broken. And on a fourth and one, they do an inside handoff and get close to the first down. 
You realize I was still playing football then. 1983, right? That is a long time ago. <laughs> so they get the first down, and now all they have to do is take a knee, and that's going to be the end of the game. Eight seconds left. No play necessary. So the Howard Bison fall to the Norfolk State Spartans. This is Coach Kerry Bailey going over to shake the hands of head coach Pete Adrian. And Bailey and his staff has to regroup and get ready for the South Carolina State Bulldogs this Thursday. We're all Norfolk State. Will next week take on the hungry Morgan State Bears, who have one of the better defenses in the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference. You can, look, you can look at Coach Bailey, the posture and his walking there. He's not real happy right now, and I can understand that. I mean, he's a little upset. And as I said, you take away the mistakes, and they play with this team. And we're going to take a timeout and come back to wrap this up. Back in moments on HBCU Sports.